It's on. Thank you. Good evening. It's Tuesday, December 15th, and we're here for our second regularly scheduled December meeting of the Brattleboro Select Board. Good evening to everybody who's watching us on TV. Um, welcome to everybody who's in attendance. Um, welcome to our ASL interpreters, members of the press, and BCTV technicians. Um, we convened the meeting at 5.30 and went into executive session to discuss contract matters, litigation matters, probable litigation, and collective bargaining agreements. While we were in executive session, we didn't make any decisions. Um, having risen from executive session, we're pleased now to begin our regular meeting. Um, I believe that we may make a change to the order of the agenda uh, if we know that the people who are going to be presenting are here, and I think that they are. Um, so unless there is some objection from anybody on the board, we will be moving the VTRANS presentation which is number A under new business to precede our unfinished business um, because they've had a long drive here and have a long drive back. Mm -hmm. Is that acceptable to everybody on the board? Yeah. Excellent. So after the liquor commissioner's matter, which will be quick, we will go right to the Elliott Street Bridge repair. Um, First matter on tonight's agenda is to approve minutes from November 24, November 30, December 1, and December 2. Is there a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. We have a motion to approve the minutes from November 24, November 30, December 1 and 2 as presented. Any comments or questions from anybody on board? From anybody who is in attendance? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And we oppose for abstaining. That carries 5 up. The next matter on the agenda is chair's remarks. So we've been meeting every week for nine weeks now, and we're going to continue meeting weekly next week, take two weeks off, but then probably need to meet every week in January. Um, I'll defer my holiday wishes until next week, because it's going to be right before the holiday weekend. I guess the only comments I want to make tonight um, relate to the events that occurred yesterday. There were two bank robberies in Wyndham County, um, one in Wilmington and one here in Brattleboro. bank that had been robbed uh, only this past summer was um, robbed again on Monday, and there was a bomb scare there as well. Um, it's very hard to know how to respond to or to react to that sort of uh, conduct going on in the community. Law enforcement uh, has been and will continue to act diligently to protect the community uh, to the best of their ability and they will continue working to investigate uh, that robbery with the goal of uh, locating the perpetrator. And uh, we would just ask everybody in the community to uh, pull together and work together to continue uh, making this as positive a place to live as we can and to act constructively to build our community up uh, rather than the destructive conduct uh, that was wreaked on our community yesterday. Um, that's all the comments I have. Next matter on the agenda would be town manager's comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's an appropriate segue because I just want to thank Jerry Carboni, who is somebody who has been building up our community for 37 years. Um, and will be retiring on Friday. So um, Jari has had the, the last 22 and a half years, he's been our library director, uh, served the town for 15 years prior to that on the library staff. Um, dedicated public servant, doesn't 
begin to describe the fullness of the, his contributions to the community, both inside the library and out in the community. Uh, and there's a reception on Friday afternoon at the library from 4 to 7 that's an open house for the community. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to publicly thank Jerry and to encourage everyone to um, come and wish him well and thank him for his service. Thank you, Peter. Next matter on the agenda is select board comments and committee reports. Anybody on select board have any comments or committee reports? Next matter on the agenda is public participation. This would be a good time for anybody who's in attendance who wants to speak to something that's not on the agenda to do so. Is there anybody who's in attendance who wants to speak to something that's not on our regular business agenda? <clears throat> Next matter on the agenda is liquor commissioners. We're ready for a motion to convene as liquor commissioners. So moved. We have a motion to convene as liquor commissioners. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? That carries 5-0. Uh, under liquor commissioners, we have an application from, is it Dunch? Yes. Yes. Dunch, Inc., uh, which is doing business now as the Flamingo Diner for um, a first-class liquor license. Generally, we would invite you up to the table <laughs> and offer you some free advertising. Uh, you but get it at the microphone. The state of Vermont is preparing a presentation about the Elliott Street Bridge repair. So if you want to come up to the microphone, it's a good opportunity to get some free advertising to tell us about your business. Do we have to do that? You don't? <laughs> okay. Okay, I guess we do. We do, actually. Well, a chance to be on TV. There's an yeah, I mean, audience of billions watching. It's so good to see it back open. Well, why don't you uh, just tell us about the Flamingo Diner? I owned the Backside Cafe for the last 11 years. Backside Cafe in downtown Brattleboro uh, on Labor Day this past year. And Carrie, my new partner at the diner, uh, and I wanted to do something entirely different. And we saw that the diner, the old jazz diner, had been for rent for a long time. And we were driving by it one day and thought, well, we, we might want to move in there. And spoke to, spoke to the landlord. We loved the place. We spent a couple months remodeling it. And we're just doing an entirely different thing there. And we, we, uh, we offer breakfast and lunch. and brunch all weekend and we're having we are really exhausted from being busy but it's a good kind of exhausted it's good. and um, we ha I had a liquor license at the other place I wasn't sure how to speak to the application or how to fill out the application properly when I saw it because I had a liquor license at the Backside Cafe for 11 years mm -hmm. but Carrie did it and now we're she was the manager there and now she's an owner so she technically hasn't had one and I have so I wasn't sure quite how to how to speak to that or to you about that but we 11 years we had no incident with anything because we're, we're breakfast and lunch and we and we have um, we don't have a bar crowd we have a pretty mellow mimosa and bloody mary and people relaxing on the weekends mm -hmm. kind of crowd so we debated whether or not we even wanted to get the license in this place but people have been asking if they could have you know some breakfasty drinks so we thought we'd apply and see how it went and that's done. excellent do you want to say anything no. <laughs> I was going to have a little hockey machine yeah. up since like 3.30, yeah. so she didn't work all day. Well, we're really glad that you were able to find another place exactly. to go back into business. Yes. Jad's has been, well, the Jad's yeah. location, uh, been oh, in yeah. place for a long, long time, and uh, we're glad to have you back in business. Well, we have all of our cafe people that are still coming to the play, to the new place, but we have all kind of, that whole neighborhood. There's nothing on, there's not, not a lot. No, of there isn't. Mm -hmm. So right. we have all kinds of new, we've tapped into a whole new group of people that absolutely love it. And we've got great feedback and people seem to love the food. So we're, we're doing all right. Good. Well, congratulations and we wish you well. Um, so the way it's going to work with this liquor license application is that Peter's going to tell us that the department heads have done what they need and then we'll vote. Peter? The department heads have done what they need. <laughs> We're ready to vote now. And um, it's, it's been approved. Um, so I'm happy to report that you filled the form out properly, despite the uh, mystery of it. Um, yeah, and, and uh, as far as the town's role in this, there is, of course, a final sign off from um, Department of Liquor Control. But um, uh, from the town's review of it, we're happy to recommend approval by the select board. Thank you, Peter. Uh, anybody on the board have any questions or comments? Is there anybody who's in attendance who has any questions or comments about Dunch Inc.'s 
application for a liquor license at the Flamingo Diner. Well, then we're ready for a motion. John's Go ahead. I no, move, you're ready. I move that we approve the first class liquor license for Dunch, Inc., doing business as the Flamingo Diner, located at 209 Canal Street. Is there any further discussion? I don't know. Hold on. Dr. <laughs> Diner. <laughs> we have a motion for first class liquor license, license at Dunch, Inc., 209 Canal Street. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Everybody opposed or abstaining? That carries 5 0. Congratulations. Good Thank luck you to you. Much. Thank you very much. It was almost painless. All right. <laughs> Is there any other business under liquor commissioners? We're ready for a motion to adjourn as liquor commissioners. We have a motion to adjourn as liquor commissioners. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And we opposed or abstaining? That carries 5 0. So now, with our agenda having been revised, um, the next item on the agenda is the Elliott Street Bridge Repair, VTrans Alternatives, and Right-of-Way and Finance and Maintenance Agreement. So, if you all want to introduce yourselves, welcome. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me here, um, for having us here. Uh, my name is Jennifer Fitch. I am the project manager for the Project Initiation and Innovation Team, which is essentially the scoping team for the structure section. So we handle all bridge projects. They come through us, and we figure out what we're going to do with them and how we're going to manage traffic before it moves on to design. And tonight, you get a two-for-one deal. Um, I'm also going to be your design project manager as well as your project manager in construction. So you're going to see me all the way through, which hopefully is a good thing. Um, and with me, I also have, you guys want to introduce yourselves? I'm John Byatt. I'm with CLD Consulting Engineers. We're the consultants who are hired to do the design of the project. Uh, my name is Jonathan Griffin. I'm a scoping engineer. I work at Hartford, and I put together the initial scope for this bridge. I'm Kyle Lunar. I'm the Historic Preservation Specialist for the Excellent. We always come in a pack. Um, <clears throat> we're going to hand out some clickers. So those were handed out earlier. This is something new that we've been doing within the last, I'd say, six months or so. Basically allows us to be more interactive with you guys uh, throughout the presentation. And I actually like questions. I like to be more, you know, more dialogue back and forth than me talking to you throughout the presentation. So if you have a question at any point, feel free to ask. This is a bad move for me. You're going to be really sorry. We can keep these, right? <laughs> Just be aware, we can all hear you in the room, but for the television, it's either the mic behind you or that mic over there that's picking up for people who are watching on TV. Okay. Just be aware of that. You can carry it around. Yeah, can I carry it? I like to move. I'm yeah. a mover. That's, yeah. Sure. Is that that's really up to the... Actually, that one's connected to the... I think they can hear you. I like, can talk really loudly. Yeah. If you want oh, to. Yeah, Okay, so like I said before, um, tonight we're really here to provide what we call an alternatives presentation. This is what we call a preferred alternatives presentation. In this case, this bridge was only looked at for a deck replacement. We, in about six months ago, decided that we wanted to do some preventative maintenance projects throughout the state, and we pulled a whole bunch of candidates, and we're only looking at deck replacements. So we looked at uh, the Elliott Street Bridge, and we looked at it only from the alternative of no action, so do nothing, or do a deck replacement. And that's all we looked at it for. Ordinarily, we would also look for it for a superstructure replacement or for a pole bridge replacement. But in this case, we evaluated it just for a deck replacement. It's a great candidate, and that's what we're here to talk to you about tonight. We're going to walk through some of the things we looked at, some of the constraints that we have. We're going to talk a little bit about um, the process moving forward and answer any questions that you may have. So we sort of did uh, introductions already. So the purpose of the meeting really is to provide an overview of our process. We're going to tell you what we looked at in terms of constraints, the alternatives that were considered, the recommended alternative, and then provide an opportunity to ask questions. So here's where the project is located. I think most folks are probably familiar with this bridge. Right now it's, a big, it's got a big hole in it. I believe there's a plate that's probably been placed over it, and there's probably a cone for safety. But my understanding it is one way right now alternating one lane of traffic, that's my understanding, in its current condition. And we know Brattleboro sees a lot of traffic, and so that's obviously something that we are concerned about in VTrans and something that we believe we would like to participate in correcting. Here's another aerial view looking top down. Again, here's Elliott Street. It's kind of located between two intersections. It is located over Whetstone Brook. So again, I'm going to provide you a little bit of an overview of our project development process, um, maintenance of traffic, the schedule, summary, next steps, and answer questions. So here we are in the normal VTrans project development process. Again, this one is moving very quickly. We're trying to expedite this to hopefully deliver it to you next summer. 
Ordinarily, our design process takes anywhere from, I would say, anywhere from two to five years. We're looking to do this in five months. So we're moving very quickly. And one of the things I want to point out, and I'm being totally honest, but it's true, Peter has been amazing in terms of responding very quickly and getting us the answers that we need so we can continue to expedite project delivery, which is really, really important. So he gets some gold stars for that. So we're kind of in a mix right now. We're in the project definition stage. This is kind of where we're going to figure out what we're going to do with the bridge. But at the same time, we've already moved into design because we're moving so quickly in order to deliver this project on time. We're basically at final plans. They were delivered a couple of weeks ago. And once we uh, advertise the project, it will move on into the construction phase. We will award it to a contractor. We use low bid uh, ordinarily at VTrans. And then the project will go into construction. That's where you're going to see boots on the ground. Um, that's when you're going to see all the activity. So here are some of the polling questions. We are going to pull you throughout. Again, it's to try to engage you and get to know you a little bit better, and also to get some input and feedback about how you feel about the scope. So the first question is, who are you representing? And you want to hit the button that correlates with the response. So are you a municipal official, a resident, a local business, an independent organization, emergency <laughs> services, or other? Don't have to feel alone. I think so. We hit everyone we are. John, oh, <laughs> more than one. Multiple well, choice. Well, not all of them. So. Okay. So everyone's clicked in. So it looks like um, it looks like we have about half municipal officials, which makes sense. We're here at a select board meeting, but it's great to see that we have some residents. And I'm really happy to see emergency services here. I always love when emergency services come to these meetings, especially when we talk about a road closure, which is something we're going to be talking about tonight. All right, so how often do you use this segment of Elliott Street? So this is just to get a sense of how many people are familiar with the area, how many people use the bridge, either on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So, uh, so it looks like most people are either using it daily or weekly, which is great to know. So you're all familiar with the site. And then what is your reason for attending this meeting? Specific concern, general interest, live in close vicinity or other. So this is for the folks primarily that came because they were interested in the project. But it's good to hear from other folks as well. Mandated is not on there. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, I'm going to hit every one of them. <laughs> This is kind of fun. So for the folks that are here for a specific concern, I hope that I address them tonight and make sure to ask me questions at the end if we have not addressed your concern throughout the presentation. And I appreciate the folks that come up because they're interested. That's great. We love public involvement in our process. So again, we're going to provide you with existing conditions, alternatives that were considered and the recommended alternative. This is really focused on the bridge. We'll talk about maintenance of traffic next. So just to do some general terms, um, engineers love to use acronyms a lot of the time. And so we created this slide to help some of the dialogue as we talk through the project. So if you look at the screen here, you'll see that some of the terms we'll be talking about tonight, the deck surface is basically what you drive on. That's the pavement. Sometimes we have bare decks, you're driving on concrete. And then you've got the bridge railing. We're going to focus a little bit on that tonight, some of the historic aspects. Um, and then you have these beams that hold up the bridge deck, basically. And together, the deck and the beams are called the superstructure. And then you have the substructure. So that's basically what the bridge is founded on. That's what's holding up the bridge in entirety. Um, and it's usually made up of your wing walls, your bridge seats, stems, and footings. So uh, this is a picture that we took at one point. Uh, this is showing the hole in the deck that we're obviously very concerned about. Once you start to see holes like this, you know that you've got deterioration in other sections of the bridge deck as well. It's just that this is the area where you're seeing it sort of exacerbated. But once you start to see this level of deterioration, it's basically just going to continue like wildfire and needs to be addressed. So this is considered a major collector. It is 88 feet. It was built in 1946. Uh, it is owned by the town of Brattleboro. And it is this, one of our typical um, cast in place deck on roll beams, very standard for its time. So existing condition, the concrete deck hat does have a full deck hole in it. My understanding is uh, a plate has been placed over it to maintain safety. Um, but it is down to one-way alternating traffic. The bridge is considered narrow. So we have Vermont state standards based on the ADT, the roadway classification. Um, we come up with lane widths and shoulder widths and all sorts of different things. So when you compare what the bridge currently is to what it would be for Vermont state standards, it's considered to be too narrow. And the bridge railing is historic as well as the bridge itself is considered historic. 
So here's just another picture. Now we're underneath the bridge deck. We're looking up, and you can see that exposed uh, reinforcing there. Again, you can see that some of that concrete has deteriorated. You can see that that reinforcing, which is the rebar, is corroded. Again, all signs that moisture and chloride are getting into the deck. And over time, that's taking its toll and it's starting this deterioration. The bridge deck rating is a three. So all bridges are rated anywhere from a zero to a nine. Nine is the best it could ever be. Zero, basically, it doesn't exist. It's no longer functioning or on the state system. All bridges usually start out at about an eight. It's very rare that any bridge, even when it's brand new, is a nine. So for your deck rating, you're at a three. That is a problem. Because anytime we're looking at a three, especially a two, we talk about closing the bridge because it's not safe anymore for the traveling public. In this case, the bridge is still considered safe. It's fine to have it open, but it is a three because of that large hole in it and because we do know that we've got some deterioration going on that needs to be addressed. The other components of the bridge, including the superstructure, it's actually looking to be in really good shape. You'll see that it's rated a seven. Again, all bridges started at an eight, so it's in really good shape. You can see there's still some nice paint on there, very little flaking. Um, so it's in good shape. And then your substructure rating is a six satisfactory. We consider that to be good. Um, anytime it's about a six or so, we consider it to about have another 40 years of life or so, 30 to 40 years of life in it. <coughs> so one of the big things about deck replacements is we consider it to be preventative maintenance. And the whole point we're doing preventative maintenance is because we want to extend the life of the existing structure. That's much more cost effective than replacing the entire structure in entirety. So we try to maintain it as long as we can. So here's just another view looking west over the bridge. Um, the bridge and approach rail is substandard. What that means is it doesn't meet our safety standards for today. That means that if somebody were to basically crash into the bridge rail, it wouldn't be able to necessarily hold them back into the roadway, which is what we're looking for. We do different test levels of rail, again, safety feature, keeping you in the roadway. And the travel lane is too narrow in accordance with state standards. You can see that's that steel plate that we were talking about. Um, the bridge itself is considered historic. And oftentimes when we mitigate, when we take out a historic asset, is oftentimes we look for different ways to mitigate. In this case, we are planning or would like to mitigate with this bridge with a historic rail. We'll have a picture of that in a couple of minutes. Um, we won't be taking out other components. The, uh, the, the beams are considered historic. The substructure is kind of that nice kind of ledge stone that's also considered historic. Those are things we will not be touching um, and will remain intact. So here's your design criteria and considerations. These are all the things that we look at when we talk about Vermont State Standards, different types of bridge components. So you have an average daily traffic of 4,800 vehicles, which for a downtown setting, that's a pretty good amount of traffic in Vermont. Oh, yeah. um, and you have a design hourly volume of 640 vehicles. That means at your peak hour, the most vehicles you have at your peak hour is 640. Again, a pretty good amount for a little downtown bridge. So it sees a fair amount of traffic. Um, your percent trucks, which is also during that peak <coughs> time, is 1.4%, so that's pretty low. So you're not getting a lot of freight movement or truck traffic over the bridge. Your design speed is 25 miles an hour, which for a downtown setting is, is a good speed limit. Again, you have that historic bridge railing, and uh, this will require some, a minor amount of utility relocation. To expedite the project, another thing as part of the deck program is we're not gonna go outside of the right of way. Anytime we go outside of the right of way and we take right of way acquisitions, it takes us about anywhere from 15 months to three years to acquire rights. So one of the things we do when we close roads um, is we minimize those right of way impacts and that allows us to expedite the project delivery and get it out that much faster. With a three rating, I would really like to replace this deck next summer or the following summer at the most, but I'm really hoping we get this out this year because we really should replace that deck. So these were the alternatives we considered. We considered no action, so basically don't do anything to the bridge at all. We did consider deck patching, and we also considered a full deck replacement. So we only consider no action if the bridge isn't going to need maintenance in the next 10 years. I think we can all safely say that this bridge is going to need maintenance in the next 10 years. That bridge deck is going to continue to need patching and all sorts of work done to it, if nothing were to happen to it in terms of deck replacement. Deck patching, we often rule out deck patching pretty quickly. Because the problem with deck patching is once you take off the pavement and the underlying bridge membrane and you expose that concrete deck, you'll often find that there's a lot more spalling or deterioration than what you anticipated. So it's often a lot more work than what you thought it was going to be initially. The other thing is anytime you have new concrete next to old concrete, in between those two concrete, it basically creates this kind of weird chemistry where you actually exacerbate deterioration, even though it's sort of counterintuitive to what you would think. 
So oftentimes we do not consider deck patching. And then the last thing that we considered was a full deck replacement, where we basically go, remove the existing bridge deck, and we replace it. Another thing to point out in a bullet on the bottom is a lot of times back in the 1940s or earlier on in construction, they didn't include shear studs. So basically what it is is you've got your steel beam and you've got these studs that come out of it. And then you pour your concrete deck on top. And we call that composite because the deck and the bridge and the, and the, uh, the beams move together, which makes it basically stiffer or stronger. But back in the 1940s, they basically just used to have steel beams and cast a bridge deck on top of it. So you didn't have that composite action. So by putting shear studs on and making a composite deck, you'll actually have a better load carrying capacity than you do today, which is also a benefit of doing a deck replacement. So here's just a, we, we're showing you the layout. Nothing really exciting to see, because it's gonna look very similar to what it looks like now. We are gonna try to widen as much as we can with the existing beams, but we're not gonna be able to get much out of it, um, because basically you're cantilevering that deck over your beam, and you can only do that to a certain point, and then at that point it sort of fails. It's, you know, can't handle that load that's cantilevered off of the edge. So we're gonna widen it slightly, um, but we're not gonna be able to do too much with it. So if you look here, what is shown in sort of the dashed black and white line is what is there now, and then what sort of more solid lines is what will be there in the future. And again, what we're showing is you're basically getting the same bridge deck that you have now in terms of widths, but we will do whatever we can to make it as wide with what we have with the substructure. So here's a proposed typical section. Again, it looks very much like it does today. Um, you're going to have approximately 10 feet on either side for a travel lane, and we're gonna maintain that sidewalk, which is five feet. That's the existing bridge, and then down here you can see that we got a little squeeze, a little bit more out of it. We still have those ten, two 10-foot ten lanes, um, but we have a little bit of shoulder width that we were able to squeeze in on either side. So it will allow for a little bit more bike ped use. So we're recommending a deck replacement here. Uh, we're gonna do it conventionally. We're gonna improve the existing bridge width as much as we can. Uh, we're going to do that aerial util utility relocation. We've been working very closely with Peter on that. So that's moving, that's moving forward and that's not going to be a problem. And no right away again will be needed because again, that allows us to expedite that project delivery and get it through faster. And again, this is a bridge that really needs a brand new bridge deck. There's no question about it. And with that, oh, and this is, talk a little bit about the historic rail here. So uh, Peter and I had quite a bit of dialogue back when this project started in September. And again, we're mitigating for taking out that bridge deck and the existing rail uh, with what we call historic rail. We do have some different options, but I would say this is like our premium option for downtown. We do like something um, that's a little bit prettier. We do try to pick a rail that sort of ties into the community and the location that it's at. So this is a rail that we did in South Barrie a couple of years ago. Um, Folks have been really happy with it. Basically, it's that concrete bottom, so that maintains your safety. That's your test level. So if a car were to drive off, they're going to go into the concrete rail. It's going to keep them on the bridge instead of going into the river. And then on top of that, we have what we call like a tinny rail. Um, so it's got those vertical <coughs> posts. We think it's very pretty. It's the prettiest one that, that I have kind of in my cache of bridge rails. And so Peter and I went back and forth. Um, I got approval from Peter to proceed with this bridge rail, so that's that's what we that's what we show in our final plans. Hopefully, you all like the bridge rail as well. I think it's very nice, especially when you compare it to what's there now. And then I'm going to hand it over to Jonathan. All right. So for the maintenance of tra traffic options that we considered, um, we considered a short-term road closure, phase construction and then uh, temporary bridge is kind of the three standard options that we have when we're doing any sort of bridge project. So for this site, um, a temporary bridge doesn't really make sense because you're in such an urban area, um, you, could, you don't have space to place it. And in addition to that, it's a, uh, a maintenance project, so the cost of a temporary bridge is so expensive that when you're doing maintenance, it doesn't really make sense. So that was ruled out. Um, Phase construction was considered as the other alternative. However, we ruled it out because of the close proximity of uh, traffic and construction workers and the width of the bridge. It's not very wide, so phasing it wouldn't have been very easy. Um, so that kind of left us with a short-term closure alternative that we proceeded forward with. Um, and actually, if we go back here. And by closing the bridge to traffic during construction, the local share is reduced by 50%, so the town doesn't have to cough up as much towards the total costs. Um, so the road closure that we considered is 
eight weeks with a detour to be signed by the town of Brattleboro. Um, and we thought this was a reasonable alternative because there's a, another bridge downstream that parallels Elliott Street, and the total end-to-end -end distance is just less than a mile, I believe. So it's pretty pretty easy access around. Um, and here's a here's a slide of the possible detour. So one of the polling questions that we have for you: uh, What would you consider would be the maximum acceptable length of the closure for bridge number 31, the Elliott Street Bridge? Once you start voting those those will come down. One of the complications to this bridge and the reason why we need the eight weeks, in some cases we can put in a conventional bridge deck in four, but the issue that we have here is that bridge rail, that we're gonna do that cast in place as well, and we really don't like traffic on the bridge when we put those bridge rails in because what happens is it, well, creates a lot more a headache for the contractor, but more so for the town, creates a lot of cracking because you're getting movement while it's trying to cure. And once you get cracking, you get water and chloride in there, freeze thaw, and it becomes much more of a night, like maintenance nightmare for you guys. And what we really want is to be as minimal maintenance for you guys when we leave as possible. That's our goal. So we could talk if folks weren't open to the eight weeks about reducing that down, but now you're gonna have contractors and drivers in the same spot so it's less safe, and you're gonna have cracking on that bridge rail, which is gonna be more maintenance for you over time. And then the total construction duration would actually be increased as well, because then they can only do one side at a time, and then there's the cure time, so okay. you would extend the actual construction probably another four to six weeks in addition. So that would take more time. So it looks like everyone's done voting. And uh, it seems pretty reasonable. Let's go to the next one here. So which time of the year would be the most acceptable for this bridge to be closed for the town of Brattleboro? And this was probably answered the community questionnaire, but I didn't take another peek at it, and I've had 30 projects, um, so my memory isn't always great. Do you know if a school bus drives over this bridge to get kids to and from school? There are definitely walkers. I don't remember about the school bus. Do you remember, Steve? There are school buses. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we'll have to consider. We right. can do the closure anytime that you want. One of the things that limits us, generally speaking, are the school buses. Now, that tends to be more in rural communities where you know the, the detour is much longer. In this case, the detour is pretty short. So again, it's really up to the town. You guys can decide when you want the closure. I think you have some options here. The nice thing is we don't have any in-stream work window. So from our perspective, we can do it any time during the construction season, which is like probably sometime in the middle of the May all the way to like October. So we're flexible on our end. Would, would you like to speak to that now or do you want to wait until after the presentation? We can talk about it now, okay. absolutely. Um, because I'd like the board to know that um, we've conveyed to you our staff opinion that um, closing immediately after the end of the school year um, and then continuing on with the construction through the middle of the summer would be preferred. And um, the reason for that is we agree that the detour for buses would be short uh, and for, for parents driving children to school it would be short. Um, but there's um, a good volume of children that walk this route to school. and. Um, we think it would be a problem for them to have to walk out of the way to get there. And you guys are in the driver's seat in terms of when the closure is. So if once you have concurrence, we are happy to put it in the special provisions any way that you would like. Okay. I just want it done. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like, will you be looking for uh, uh, some sort of vote of the board to authorize a town manager or a town manager can just make that decision? Well, I mean, that's up to how your politics works. I've been working with Peter the whole time and he's been great to work with, but however you want to proceed is fine with, with me. Yeah, it, we'll, we'll talk about it before this okay. is finished up today. Okay. But um, Mr. DeGray. Yeah, Mr. DeGray, that would be you. <laughs> Aaron. The right. microphone, but <laughs> you know that you've forgotten so soon. <laughs> well, before you asked us a question about preferred time six weeks, eight weeks, ten weeks uh, I would think that that would be part of uh, if you're going to close this for pretty much the last week of June, mm -hmm. uh, school starts the last week of August. Mm -hmm. I think the length of time that you're looking at for the construction if you're not going to affect the school traffic, uh, the time factor has to come into play. So mm -hmm. 10 weeks 
Either way, you're going to end up uh, bumping into the school traffic if you go that route. Mm -hmm. And we're confident, I should look at John when I say this, but I, we're confident we can get it done in eight weeks. We've been proceeding forward with eight weeks as the assumption that uh, will be the allowable closure period. So we would try and make the contract documentation um, indicate that. All right. Do you think it can be done quicker than eight weeks? So then, so basically, the more you try to accelerate, right, the longer you have con construction workers out there, that's possible, but it's going to drive up your costs, right? And then the other piece to that is is that we also have minimum cure times for our concrete. Right. So, so for some of it, we couldn't accelerate it even if we tried because right. we have to wait X amount of days or until the concrete gets to a certain strength. Um, but we could, in certain circumstances, have our our contractors work later now they're causing noise at night and i don't know if you have a noise ordinance i'm assuming that you do but i don't know so there's that those those kind of factors to consider and it does get more expensive when you have longer work windows for your con so that's a expense to the town however we could talk about that that's definitely on the table no it's um it's just a it's so widely used i mean it's, I know. it's an amazing bridge with five what is it five streets coming into that you know, and it, I use it every day. Yeah. Every day. And it's, I'm just amazed there hasn't been an accident there, but there's been a lot of uh, salutes with the uh, the one <laughs> finger. And I just, it's, it's been, it's a, it's a tough bridge. And I think that even goes to the heart of why it's so important to close it. Because I think having that much traffic and the contractors side by side, if we did phase construction, mm -hmm. is just going to be a huge safety issue. Plus, right. it is really narrow, so it doesn't really allow us the width that we need for emergency vehicles, for example. Um, so again, another good reason to close it. Oh, we, yeah. We recognize that we need to do everything that we can to shorten that window up. And, you know, John is always looking for ways to do that. But in this case, because of that cast in place concrete rail, um, it just it's going to take a little bit of time to That's do that. Right. Yeah. And phase construction gets challenging with the staging area for the contractor because right. you've got the two intersections on each side. They really have no place to put equipment. So this site is particularly challenging for that type of construction. All right. So let's see here. So the recommended scope. Uh, we would recommend to replace the deck with a new cast in place concrete deck and main traffic on an offsite detour. Um, we propose an eight week closure period. Um, we would improve the width one foot nine inches, and that would be in the shoulders. Um, I think the lanes still remain the same width. Yep. Um, then we would have a new bridge and a pro trail. I believe there's uh, one segment, one corner that doesn't have any approach trail where we would be placing a pro trail, and then there's another one that doesn't have any, and that's going to stay the same. So that's not going to get changed at all. Um, we need to relocate uh, one aerial utility. Um, and we're not proposing to take any right of way. And ideally, construction will go this summer. And I'm going to, before we go to the next slide, in terms of the schedule, I just want to make you aware. So there's a new requirement now for long eared bats. <clears throat> and normally, when we have over a year duration, we can go out and do bat monitoring and all sorts of things when the bats are sort of around in the summertime. So right now, what we're trying to figure out with our environmental section is how do we clear the site for bats? That is the only hurdle I see to try and advertise this in March for our summer construction. I'm doing whatever I can do to push the folks in my environmental section almost on a daily basis. And this is somewhat new for us because this requirement just started in the fall. So we're still trying to internally figure this out. But basically, the issue is, is that we can't have bats roosting on this bridge because if they roost on the bridge, then basically we can't do construction work because the bats are considered endangered at this point. So we're figuring it out how we're going to try to clear it in the wintertime without bats around. We have some really innovative ideas to keep the bats out. Um, and so we're working on it. But just so you know, that is the only real hurdle that I see that might prevent us from advertising. But again, I'm doing everything I can do to push that along. And my, my manager is also helping me as well. So. The old bat <laughs> So here we've got the alternative matrix, um, which we provided the cost for. Since we ruled out do nothing and deck patching, there are no costs here. Um, so we've got the deck replacement. Um, and the total estimated project cost is just under $600,000. And because if we are able to close it, the town's share is only 2.5% of the total cost. That is less than $15,000 for the town share for this new deck. 
That's a bargain, right? We're bringing you a bargain today. Okay, I'm, I'm ready to for a round of applause. There's got to be a catch. There's no, well, to actually go back to that. There is a little bit of a catch. So okay. the only catch there is, is this is per Act 153 that was created in 2012 that reduces the town share by 50% if you close the road and don't install a temporary bridge. The only thing that's required, though, as part of Act 153 is that the town is responsible for signing the detour. So we'll do what we normally do, which basically just says road close right around the bridge where the contractor needs his space. But then anything around that, it's the town that takes the lead on signing the detour route. Done. That's, 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 that's the only hook you have. <laughs> So uh, that leads us to our next polling question. Um, which would you be most concerned about? And you've got your list here, you know. And uh, if anybody can't read it, I can read those out loud for you guys if you'd like. Please read it. Absolutely. So uh, closure duration is the first one. Bridge aesthetics, environmental impacts, recreational impacts, emergency services, business impacts, other, or you're not really concerned. Our emergency folks, are you guys voting or you're not voting today? Okay, so you're not concerned about emergency services? I always like to kind of hear about emergency services a little bit when we talk about a road closure. Do you have, like, you know, your medical facility, I don't know where it's located in town. For example, if this bridge is closed, does that become more work for responding, longer response time, those kind of things? It kind of sections off a piece of that town, but not too awful bad. Okay. It's still very accessible. Okay. Just kind of cuts it off. Okay. So as long as we're coordinating and you are well aware of the closure timing and duration and everything else, then we should be okay? Sure. Okay. Excellent. Um, and then the next polling question is, which design aspect is the most important to you? And uh, once you start voting, those will start to disappear. Um, again, the first one is the bridge width. The second one is aesthetics. Um, the bridge railing. The third one is the construction year. The next one down is the construction duration. Then cost, and then other. So which is the most important? Yeah, it's exactly right. I'm surprised that C didn't get more votes. The yeah, construction year. Yeah. It's only a construction two months. No, what, what year? Yeah, which year? This year or the following? I think we didn't understand. That's what it meant. That's okay. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Excellent. I think everyone is, uh, well, I'll keep pressing. <laughs> so keep <laughs> trying, we'll know how much um, and then last, do you, do you find this presentation to be too technical in nature, um, too simplified, just about right, or not much use at all? And you won't offend us, I promise. <laughs> Yeah. 100%. We'll take it. 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 Voting, voting's closed. <laughs> uh, oh, I thought there was that was the last one. So this one. Do you find the this recommended scope of work satisfactory? Okay. It doesn't matter what you press. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. They're all automated responses. So. Excellent. And then uh, for the next steps for this bridge, um, we're waiting on the town's response to the recommendation for the proposed project, and we brought form with us for you guys. Um, we have uh, conceptual plans that are going out for uh, comment review, or final plans, actually, and then uh, processing local agreements, the uh, right away finance and maintenance agreement. And BATS. And, and bats. 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 Yes. And so. I will keep Peter in the loop on the bats. Like I said, I'm doing everything I can to, to manage it. Um, I'm one of the most... I don't know what I want to use, aggressive, assertive project managers on our team. So trust me that I'm, I'm moving it and pushing as hard as I can. Is there more business to here? And then if there's, uh, if you'd like any more information, we have actually, we have tear-offs here that have these that link provided there so that you can go here and find more information for the project. We also brought, um, I think it's 20 fact sheets that kind of have the, uh, the basic bridge information and you're more than welcome to come and grab one for your information if you'd like. So just a couple follow-up items like Jonathan said. Um, there is a letter. You don't need to use that one necessarily. You can use your own, but we do like something in writing that says the town endorses the scope, especially in town highway projects where you're going to have a share. 
Um, and then there is a right away finance and maintenance agreement. It does two things for us. One is it states that you'll pay 2.5% of your share um, for whatever design costs remain and construction costs. Um, the other thing it does is it says if for some reason we needed to condemn, which in this case we don't need to, uh, the town would condemn on behalf of the project because the state can't condemn on behalf of the town. Um, so those are the two things that that document does. Once you sign at, or at some point provide me with those documents, it basically just says you're committed just as much as we're committed and we're going to keep moving forward. I don't know if there's any more questions about that. I think we should sign it right now. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm, I'm ready to make it. Uh, we're, we're, exactly. still, we're still moving forward. I mean, unless Peter right. said to me, you right. know, red light, red light, I'm you know, we, exactly, but he, you know. the whole time, Peter's been great about saying, yep, full speed ahead. We're endorsing you. Yeah. Keep moving. Good. And other than that, if there's any other considerations that we're not aware of, um, if anything we should be made aware of, please feel free to contact us and, and let us know. So we'd like to be as accommodating as possible. So does anybody on the board have any questions or comments? I have a very curious question. Yes, please. Ask. How did you become aware of this bridge, having this problem? That is a great question, and one that I can't actually answer. Um, so there is a new program that started about a year and a half ago called the Asset Management Program. It started to be mandated by uh, Federal Highway Administration, which is where we get most of our funding. And uh, within the Asset Management Program, we have all of our bridge inspectors and our programmer. So she's the one that identifies candidates. And this one popped on our list. I'm not, sh I don't, it's kind of a magic black box. She takes a lot of different things into consideration, which has to do with what are the bridge inspections, the RPCs, the towns, there's a whole selection process, operation gets involved. So it could have come from the RPC, it could have come from the town, it could have come from the operations division just saying, hey guys, I drove over this bridge today and there's a big hole in it and it's alternating one-way traffic. So I don't know, um, I don't know Matt, if you had any input from the RPC on this bridge in particular when it came time. But like you said, I think it was a, a list of variables. Yeah. We thought somebody important might have driven over it. Or did Steve Is it on your inspection? Okay. Yeah. And, you know, we had, and this is right in downtown, and, you know, economic vitality is also very important to VTrans. And so it's another good reason yeah. why this is a great candidate. Yeah. We really want you to have two lanes. <clears throat> So. We keep an eye on all town highway bridges over 20 feet. Mm -hmm. Our bridge inspection staff inspect every single town highway bridge in the state of Vermont that are over 20 feet in length. Mm -hmm. So this one was on our biannual inspection. It might have even been on an annual inspection. Um, so we have records of this bridge going back years. Peter, you have to comment? Yeah, um, it's evident to everybody who's watching this, the quality of the work that's being done on this. But I just wanted to reinforce the point that the, the first contact that we had was less than four months ago um, at the end of the summer. And, um, you know, I, I appreciate the nice things you said about me. I'm sending them back to you and your team double. <laughs> um, you know, Jennifer's been terrific as the point of contact, but everybody we have dealt with, uh, both within VTrans and in the contracting uh, support team in this that's making it happen, it, 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 they're all, they've all been very good at what they're doing and amazingly fast. I mean, when they say they're committed to doing this on an expedited basis, um, you know, on a daily and weekly basis, we get actions happening that reinforce the commitment that the entire team has to um, getting this done and getting it done now. And we really appreciate that. We need this for our community. And the fact that you're doing it, doing it this way and charging us two and a half percent of the cost is it's a so bargain far. deal. Fantastic. So, um, thank well, you. And I do appreciate it. It is a two way street. I, town, some of my towns are great and responsive and you've been the whole time and that really helps us expedite. There are some towns that are always so, so responsive. So we really appreciate it. And the whole team is great. We've got a lot of wonderful people. CLDs probably had a lot of long nights putting together the uh, the plan sets as quickly as they can, so they certainly deserve a lot of credit as well. Thank you. Anybody else on the board want to say something? Else? Um, just to say thank you. The quality of the presentation was stellar. Mm -hmm. Makes it so accessible, and appreciate your work on it. Great. And did you like the polling? I liked the polling. Yeah. 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 Well, like the polling. Yeah. Okay. We're wondering if we should rent them. We got a big thing. We need to work up. Come soon. No, it is there was, any, yeah, no, I've been at, you know, on the board for a while, and it, this is the first time I think we've ever had this kind of a presentation on a bridge. So I really appreciate how fast it's going because, again, I can't say it enough, it's a really used bridge. I mean, it, it gets used a lot. So it's, I, I'm just glad it's on a fast track. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the uh, 
the presentation. So. And I'm excited because normally I only get to hold these projects when it's in scoping and then I do some in design but not many. So usually they leave me. They're like my children and then they leave. <laughs> so I'm happy that I get to stay on this one the whole time. Is there anybody who's in attendance who wants to speak to this? So Dick, can you well, recommend some place for them to go for dinner? We got a lot of good restaurants. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You see Mr. DeGray about it. Well, we're, down, we're gonna we're gonna go back up at some point, but <laughs> a lot of good choices for dinner. Yeah. I'm gonna make motion. Yeah. 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 All right. So what should we buy him dinner? I moved to. Oh, I'm moving. I do have one question. Yeah. Is Hannah here? No. no. Hannah is not. Hannah and Steve are um, our leadership here. team uh, for these kinds of projects and all other things public works in town. And Steve is here. Hannah is not this evening. Hannah, mm -hmm. Hannah's been doing a great job too. She's yeah, been she has. Lots of dialogue back and forth. So right. I just wanted to say thank you to her as well. Thank you. Well, I move that we uh, endorse the preferred alternative for deck replacement in an eight week period during the summer of 2016. And then we authorized the town manager to communicate that endorsement to um, VTRANS and to finalize and execute the finance right of way and maintenance agreement between the state of Vermont uh, AOT and the town of Brattleboro. You didn't just Sounds do that good. off the top of your head. <laughs> yes, you did. Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Everybody opposed or abstaining? That carries 5 0. Thank you so much for coming. That's Thank great. You. Thanks, news. everybody. Appreciate it. Thanks for your work. We don't, we're the last thing I'll just let you know about is um, we'll be posting the results from tonight's presentation as well as any Thanks. plans that we have, the scoping report, everything else on a public SharePoint site. Okay. And we'll send you the link. So you can go in at any time and access that information. Thank you. Thank you. Off. Excellent. That was great. It was. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> we haven't had fun <laughs> a lot of our meetings <laughs> like this. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> uh, so the next matter on the agenda is the police fire facilities project. So we've got uh, three bullet items under the police fire facilities project. A, should the projects be divided and phased? B, does the select board want or need any additional alternatives? And three, schedule for decisions, warning approval, straw poll, and representative town meeting action. So what I'll note is that at our three public meetings, late November and early December, some members of the public raised questions about how police fire facilities project work should be timed. Should we do it all at once? Should we try to do it in pieces? Um, maybe we should think about doing one facility at one point, one facility at another point. And so we have noticed this question, should the projects be divided and phased for anybody to provide specific comments about those issues? We will take comments about those issues at a later date as well, if anybody wants to make them. But we wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity for a dedicated discussion of that issue. And so even before anybody from the board says anything, I'm going to inquire if there's anybody who's in attendance who wants to speak to whether the police fire facilities project should be divided up or phased. Hearing nobody in attendance on that topic, we encourage anybody who's got any point of view on that matter to come forward anytime at any one of our select board meetings because we want to hear from you. But at this point, I guess what I'll ask is if there's anybody on the board who's got any specific views about that topic. Yep. No, no, no. Dave. Yep. Um, I think the, I mean, the purpose to, in phasing it, I think Thanks is, for coming. Thank Have you. a safe trip. Can we got all the clickers? I just want to check. No, <laughs> no. we want to keep them. <laughs> I kept my... You never get them all back. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> no, that's okay. no, that's fine. I think that the purpose for phasing it would be if there was some way of, of spreading the money over the bonds over time so that the those second and third and fourth year impacts could be spread out and in practical terms that's been done 
because we already bar we borrowed five million two years ago, and we're looking at at the most another seven million. Yes. So if we borrow, if we got that bond this May, um, we would have the, a chunk of the year where it's just interest or no payments, or I'm, I forget how that works, but mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't see the effect of it for another year, which is mean we'd be in the third year of the five million, and that was a 15-year bond. The five That's million? correct. Yeah. So uh, it's already starting to, to trail off. And um, so I think effectively, in terms of the financing, there's really, I can't see any reason to like borrow three million next year and then f wait two or three more years and borrow another four million. I don't think it's gonna have enough of an impact to, to justify holding back these projects. So I, mean, I think effectively the, the uh, re-vote and the, uh, the, the vote against our budget and the reconsideration of the whole project has already done that. Anybody else? I don't see a reason to phase it. I, no, I don't either. I, right. The, the one issue about phasing that I'll speak to is that there has been inquiry from people who are in attendance at our meetings about whether we should do all pieces of the project. Should we delay or not do West Brattleboro? Maybe we should not do Central or not do Police uh, and put one of them off. Um, what I've taken away from the presentations and what I've taken away from years worth of presentations is that the needs are pressing at all of the locations and that some work needs to be done at all the locations and that delaying one of the work at one of the locations will ultimately mean that we've got to come back to it three or five or seven years out after doing some immediate needs work right away. So I don't really understand at this point how it could save us any money It'll cost in us. the short, medium, or long right. term It'll cost us. to delay like doing West Brattleboro. Right. I mean, it's got to be fixed, and that one, what is it, a million three or a million eight total? Mm -hmm. And to put that off doesn't seem to make sense in the grand scheme of things because we'd wind up having to do it five years out. It's going to cost more and um, still needs to be done. And I think the same applies to all three sites. Next question. Donna? I'm just yeah. noticing that it's possible that the board has consensus on that particular mm -hmm. item, oh, I think which so. is pretty exciting. I really do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so the second question has to do with the, should the select board, does the select board, I'll start again, does the select board want or need any additional alternatives? So that was really a question for the board, but I'll ask again, are there any people in attendance now who want to speak to that question? Anybody on the board? Sure. Um, I think we have plenty of, all, you know, and I, I think it was great that we, we came up with those, you know, that through the process that, uh, you know, more options were. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy with the amount of, uh, and again, I think it would just muddy the water if we had too many. Um, and right now, it just seems like there's a good amount of options out there. Let's move along. Don? I agree, and I think, oh. I know, it might be the first time that John and I agree, so this is a really historic moment. Um, listening to feedback from the approximately 130 people who came out over the course of our three meetings and sitting through the presentation three times and hearing all of the comments, I was listening to hear if there were options that some of our town residents were looking for that wasn't being provided in the presentation and I mm. didn't hear that. Um, and I have thought long and hard about that particular question because this is of course an important decision. But I feel like the options that have been offered and have been well thought out really span a spectrum. And there are all kinds of possibilities within the options that have been laid out before the board and before the town. So my answer to that is thank you for that preparation. And I don't think I need any further options in order to decide. Next question. Well, I, I want to I, I wanna at least note that the reason this is on the agenda is that there was at least some uh, um, right.
commentary yep. at our last meeting Absolutely. about whether an alternative between six and twelve million dollars was something that was feasible and that might be more palatable to the electorate as a whole. And I personally would like to at least hear if um, there is some combination or subgroup of these various things that have been presented to us between the six and the twelve million dollar option that at least we should have on the plate to consider. That's why it's there and I'm in favor of that. But if you know the board isn't I'm happy to 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 pass over it. Well I, you know it's <coughs> I can't really I, figure I, it I, out no, at no. this point. I know, but I'm my feeling, and this is a personal feeling, and, and one I've held for a long time, is that I want to go for as much as we can possibly get out of this, it, 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 because I still don't think that we're going far enough into the future um, if we scale it back. And for the, and I don't want to say it's small amounts of money, but uh, you know, just for instance, the third floor of the uh, of Central Station, I think should be added on there. Um, and I've talked to Peter, and I've, I've expressed my feeling, to, because I think it's short-sighted uh, for seven hundred or six hundred fifty thousand, seven hundred thousand dollars. It just makes that building more accessible for more years down the road. So um, I'm I'm all for you know doing as much as we can. So um, I, I think there's plenty of alternatives out there, and and I think we've hashed them over. And, you know, my thing right from the get-go has been to do it and to not put it onto other boards or other, you know, uh, future residents of town. Uh, this is our decision to make, and I just think we should make it so that it's as far into the future as we can possibly do it. Well, That's I've expressed my view and I we'll move on from it. Yeah. Happy to lose, you know. <laughs> um, and then the... Um, Third topic is talking about schedule for decisions uh, for approving a warning for gathering public input and for representative town meeting action. And I'm just going to uh, take the lead on that one for starters. We have a number of meetings that have been tentatively scheduled to address additional topics. And I think there's three of them. Correct. Three of them. And that would be uh, the first three meetings in January, like the 5th, 12th, and the 19th. Is that what we were planning on? Uh, right now we have the uh, 5th, 12th, and 26th. <laughs> but the 19th is a regular uh, meeting, and so yeah, we we'll have other business to do that night. We could also address this matter right. further if we need to. And so uh, we have topics to discuss uh, at various meetings through January and to continue collecting public input, if any, about how to proceed. And our goal, I think, has been to schedule a special representative town meeting on March 12th before our regular March 19 representative town meeting so that we know what town meeting has voted for before we have our regular budget meeting on the 19th. So that's timing. The warning has to be 30 or 40 days before the 12th, which uh, is first week of February. the first week of February for approval of the warning. So that uh, is a time frame that we're contemplating. The question then, Became, let's, let's talk about that timing issue first. Is everybody comfortable with that timing scheme? Uh, I mean, we, we, what's another meeting? I know. I know. <laughs> well, and it's you know we don't have a lot of time left. I mean, so that's that's the whole thing. Yeah, if you I want mean, to do it that way, instead of waiting and having it, put it in the budget and having it at town meeting, just do it once. Put the other. I like, you're right, I like this idea. Though. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, I'm, con yes. I'm concerned about noticing 
town meeting discussion and then a bond issue for the same day as the regular right. representative town meeting because we have to do both the town and the school budget on the same day and I'm not convinced we can get all the work done on the 19th so I think we have to plan for the 12th and the 19th meeting right so that's that's at least preliminarily what we're going to be working towards hearing nobody no. saying anything different no. anybody in attendance have any comments about that Mr. DeGray? Uh, a, a question. So uh, you were talking at the last last week about uh, possibly having a uh, question. We'll get to that in now. a second. We'll get to that in a second. Okay. So I was That's just next. wondering how that plays into your schedule. Right. So then the question for follow-up discussion goes to the comments last week that it'd be nice to gather public input to the extent possible. We had public presentations, <clears throat> but uh, didn't get a lot of public input about specific alternatives. And one idea that had been at least preliminarily floated was putting something on the ballot uh, March 1st is election day I've spent quite a bit of time trying to figure out how a non-binding ballot item could be phrased in order to gather meaningful input. And, it's the and I've drawn a blank. Yeah, it's a, the phrasing is the, the it's it's difficult to phrase the inquiry. Right. Uh, it's difficult to parse it out into different pieces. It's not slanted. Or and on top of that. Uh, we operate in Brattleboro and in the state of Vermont as a whole with the town meeting form of government, except in a very limited number of communities. And um, I think that there's an important uh, um, discussion and information sharing function that the town meeting plays. And I'm worried about just putting a whole range of alternatives onto a ballot uh, without sufficient uh, um, uh, explanation for the elected result. And so what I've uh, moved towards is thinking about having one more general sort of informational public meeting after we've gone through this whole series of select board meetings to gather input about these specific topics in order to give everybody an opportunity to come out and say what they think about uh, what we should be doing going forward. And then uh, we can do that at the middle school, just like the town meetings are gonna happen. And then we can hear from anybody who wants to have input before we get to the representative town meeting on March 12th. And maybe we can do that even before we notice it up, uh, like in the first week of February. So that's where I'm at now. Donna? Um, I hear your concerns about the wording on the ballot and share them. I, I guess I am wondering out loud whether we could have some expert guidance on how it could mo most articulately be worded to convey the information we're wanting to convey and to, and to give people a chance to weigh in. I prefer that, at least initially, after hearing your suggestion, because I think it's likely that we might see many of the same 130 people who turned out previously. And while we didn't actually solicit specifically their thinking about what the best option might be, I think if we were to find a way that we all felt comfortable with to put it on the ballot, we would reach many more people because the number of people who vote um, far exceeds the number of people who turned out to all three of our meetings combined. So that's my initial response. Anybody on the board? I think, I, I'm not sure, are we, do we all, do all five of us think that the 11 point million dollar Black Mountain and, and um, Fire Station 1 and 2 proud proposal is the best one? Do we? All I'm agree. Not, I'm not 100% sure. Not, yeah. Yeah. And are you? Pretty much agree that that's the, that's the best option. 
Yes. That's the one you would vote for. That is the one that I to. will vote for. Yeah. Because I'm just thinking that, I mean, we've done a lot in terms of informing people. We can do more. We can you know, have many, many, many more meetings. But I think the question, I think really the question is, are we going to go forward with this at least 20-year project or not? And I would, I, I think, I'm not sure there's, I, know, I don't know how much we can reach out and how much we can try and engage people um, to do a better job of giving, giving them whatever they need to make a decision. I mean, at some point, we've done as much as we can or as, as much as needs to be done, and it's up to people to just make up their minds about whether they're going to vote for it. I think I'd rather, if we're almost consensus that there's one thing that's the best thing to do, that we should say, this is what we think is the best thing to do, and we're going to talk about it all day on March, whatever day that is, and um, and then we're going to vote on it, and so, you know, run for town uh, rep and come vote, and just kind of be done with it, because I think we really have, I mean, if 130 people, we sent a postcard to everybody in town, I just don't, I'm not sure there's much more that we can do or many more people that we're going to be able to um, provide information to help them make that decision. That's going to be better than what the town meeting does. David, I, ask, I absolutely agree that we have to come up with a consensus of what we feel as a board is the right decision. Um, I, am, I think we've done everything we can. Um, this is our form of government. We have representative town meeting. Uh, I am not in favor of doing another ballot question on a, a you know, or, or the people have had plenty of opportunity to come. Um, we've given, you know, between the postcard, between the, the meetings, they can come any meeting. We, we discuss this almost every meeting. So they can come and they can voice their opinion. Um, Again, you know, and people have said, you know, well, maybe we should change our form of government. Well, that's that's a whole other question. If people want to go, with it, but this is what we have right now. This is our form of government, and I say let the representative town meeting members vote on it. But we have to come up. I think we have to come up with something first, pretty quickly, and just make a decision. And, and again, and you know, my I, I love the whole the whole shebang, but I am not I would love this to be a consensus, you know, that all of us go in with one, um, and I'm not going to balk it, but I will, you know, I'll, I'll voice my opinion on what, but I think we should come up with one and start putting it out there as, as quickly as possible. Just to add to that is that we're also, our next three meetings, are gonna, we have three meetings coming up where we're going to be talking about related topics like what to happen to this building and, and others that we can try to advertise those as well. It's all, I mean, it's just going to stay there. It's going to continue to be there. The opportunities for people to come in and say what they want or think or ask questions is going to be there for just week after week after week until town meeting. So I, I kind of... Well, anyway, there are so a lot of peripheral questions that you know about this building and things like that. But I don't think we should muddy the water with those. Right. I think we should it's stay just focused on the picture. It does, yeah. but I, I still think we should stay focused on making a decision and then saying this is what the board recommends and and this is the direction we're going and that, and how we want. And I, David, you're right. How we want, you know, the wording on that. It, it's. Yeah, and Don, I agree. I don't know if there's special help out there, but I don't know if we need it. I think there's enough smart people around here that can figure out how to word it. And, um, but it is a tricky, it's tricky worded mm -hmm. because you don't want to slight it. You know, you don't want to have it go one way or the other, but you want to make it, you know. Let me right. see. Kate, did you want to say anything or not? Don't have to. <laughs> I don't want to call on you. No, I mean, I'm just really <laughs> conflicted by this whole thing. And... Part of me, and maybe I shouldn't worry about the future, but part of me worries that you know we'll have a we'll have a special town meeting, and it won't work out the way we want it to work out. And then where do where do we go? And maybe I shouldn't worry about that. You know, that's just the everything's gonna fall where it falls, and I shouldn't worry about that. But it's just something. It's there's so many. I think there's so many. There are other pieces to this that it's not. It sounds simpler, I think, than it is. 
in some ways, like let's make a decision, let's bring it to a special town meeting. There's other little <laughs> things that can drive that tr drive that car, perhaps, into a wall or something. You know, I just I just think we have to think it through because we don't need this to collapse again. I mean, I think that's what I'm worried about. You know, getting into a situation where and maybe it'll collapse. I, 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 I know that's the thing. I mean, I don't think. We have control over that. No, I know we don't, but I just don't want to. I just, I don't know. I just am really conflicted. Well, it would be nice if we could uh, gauge sentiment of the electorate as a whole in anticipation of. It might be nice. It might, it might be nice. It might. There's a lot of things. To be able to be. gauge, if we could gauge uh, a sentiment of the electorate as a whole. Um, in anticipation of town meeting vote. Um, I've expressed some concerns about whether that's really possible. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have to make that decision for a period of weeks. Preliminarily, I'm hearing some people, at least uh, some people wanting that, some people on the fence about that, and some people uh, not <laughs> believing that it's really an, uh, a necessary step or a useful step in the context of where we are right now. Um, if we wind up passing the bond vote at uh, town meeting and then having it rejected later on, we're going to be back at the $6 million project right. by default because that has to get done. Right. Right. Well, that's what I'm, what I'm concerned right. about is how do we get this done in a way that is actually more forward thinking and, and gets to a result that we really should get to. I mean, right. I think that's why I'm, I'm being hesitant about this because I just want it to work this time. So it's like, let's figure out a way that it's going to work this time. Well, we wanted it to work the yeah. last time. No, but I, you know what I'm you saying. Know, I know. I, I just want to do it, because my I want this to happen. And I'm not sure where I want it to happen. But I just want something to happen. So I think I, I'm just in this, let's be, let's think it through in a way that maybe we can get it farther than we got it the last time. Well, do you think we've done enough? We've done enough outreach. OK. And. So that's where I, I, I'm conflicted a little bit, is that if, if you feel, we, I just don't know how much more we can do. And no, I, I don't think we should do, oh, yeah, I'm not talking about doing PowerPoints and all that kind of stuff anymore. I'm trying to figure out a way that maybe we can figure something out that we'll understand what people are thinking so we can have a better a, idea of it so that we're going to town meeting with something that we, not just five people like, but we know that there's enough sort of momentum behind it that you know, and again, John, no, not everybody shows up at stuff as, you know, not all this, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But what I'm saying is I want this to move forward, but I think we have to figure out a way that there is that momentum behind it because it just can't be five of us. I mean, it's all well and good that five of us like something or four of us like something or whatever, but, you know, we've got all these other people in the, in the town. And I think if we go forward with just it, just not having some kind of sense on where this is headed. It's sort of like we're just back into that place where we were before. And I don't have the silver bullet answer on how we get that, and maybe we can't get that. But you know what we've done so far I think has been fabulous. The presentations have been fabulous. I think they've been well done. Um, you know, we've done a presentation, but what we haven't done is ask for that next step. Like, what do you folks think? And maybe no one will answer that question. And that's where I think I'm cynical. I know, but I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to. Sorry, Donna. No, no, but I'm trying not to be. I don't. I don't. I don't think we should start at that place where we're cynical. I think we should at least be able to ask the question. And if somebody doesn't answer, fine. But we can't start like no one's gonna. No one's gonna show up. No one's gonna answer. Because that's not where our default should be. Our default should be. We represent the town of Brattleboro. It's up to us to at least ask the question. And I'm not yeah. saying I don't not saying of the ballot is the best way. I'm just saying it's not just it, there are other people out there that we have to consider because it, it's it's not just uh, we're building a building. It's about it's a pocketbook issue for a lot of people. And again, I am thinking this way because I want it to succeed. So I'm trying to just you know sort of somehow working in my own brain, like, how do we get it to where it will succeed this time? And I, I, I don't know what that answer is, but I don't want the default position to be, well, no one's going to come out or no one's going to tell us. I want to at least somehow ask the question. And if it's having a meeting up at the middle school and saying, hey, everybody come, and if nobody comes, 
we have asked the question, and we have not asked the question yet. We've done the presentation. We haven't asked the question. I'm sorry, I'm beating a dead horse <coughs> here, but I just—that's why I'm I'm feeling like I'm feeling because, you know, I just think it's I just feel very much hear from you know that we need to reach out and make that effort. And again, if nobody if nobody comes, nobody comes. But I I just feel that we have to do something to make this succeed this time. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that there's at least three people on the board who would like to see some further public outreach in order to solicit people's views. How that will happen remains a very open question. How to make that happen effectively remains a very open question. Let's continue to consider that. Are you counting as we go for three? No. <laughs> well, put me in there. Well, there's four. <laughs> and, 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 and so uh, um, we'll, we'll, we'll continue to, to consider that and to, and to solicit it and to solicit comments about that. And let's try to figure out what's the best way to gather that input, whether by ballot, whether by public meeting, whether by some internet outreach. I mean, those little clickers that we had today, <laughs> we just need 12, were, we just need 6,000 of them. We need, we need 8,000 of them. So, uh, um, Maybe so all that, those things. Right? And, and so this will just remain an open topic for discussion, recognizing that we want to try to move forward. I will note, Kate, also, that I think there's a difference between publicizing and supporting and generating support for uh, an alternative yep. Yep. and soliciting general input and direction. Yep. And so we may also want to engage in the former, mm -hmm. which is if we choose a specific alternative through whatever mechanism the board chooses to use and after whatever outreach we use, uh, we may want to then find a way to publicize that yep. and to communicate why we believe it's in the public interest. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's a that's separate yeah, stage of this. Yeah. That deals more with momentum. It right? does. Yeah. Than just information. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So both of those things need to be considered yeah. as we go forward. Don? And I also want to say I was very yeah. impacted by one particular email that landed in my inbox um, this past week. And it was just a reminder that it was, first of all, a vote of confidence that the town and the select board has done its due diligence and at some point a request for some leadership from the board in um, landing on an option that we feel is in the best interest of the town. And there's something about our dialogue with each other which could be seen potentially as a microcosm of the broader community, even though we come from a particular perspective, we've been grappling with this and really pouring over all the options. So I do feel at this point like it would be wonderful if we all found that solid ground mm -hmm. and found our way toward agreement and could really with confidence offer have that be our best offering to the town and uh, provide that leadership because I think momentum is key here I think that we've talked about it so much and at one point I really felt for particularly our emergency service workers sitting through the third presentation. I just felt like, maybe it was just personal, but I felt deeply sorrowful that it has taken this long. And so my own call to action to, to have our board provide the leadership necessary. We cannot control the outcome. You know, we are only a small group of elected officials and likely to be changing very soon, but we can give our best offering and do that in a timely way. Anybody else across the table right now? Dick, speechless. Yeah. <laughs> I certainly appreciate the dialogue, and it was interesting that you guys were looking at each other and not uh, at us, and I, I think that's the way that the conversation should have happened. Having said that, I do have a procedural question for you, Mr. Chairman, is that if you do choose do you have the option of going to a non-binding multiple choice article question on the March 1st ballot if you're looking for more information from the public? I don't know if you can or you can't. And then the second part is, you know, we keep talking about 135 people showing up and what's the magic number? And as I said last week, 
you could get a 10% turnout for uh, the election and 10% voting on if you were allowed to have an article question with multiple choice or if you even, even if it's one singular question. You know, then you've got two weeks to kind of digest that or it's just, oh look, 10% of the public turned out. And at the end of the day, uh, the reality is we elect our officials with whatever number of people, with it, whether it's 6% or 50%, you get elected. And one of the things that happened uh, two years ago, the 1% fa uh, passed on a non-binding article question. It was defeated. And actually town meeting voted it down and there were people that were saying, oh, that number isn't representative of the whole community, how the whole community felt. And my feeling was, is that the people that showed up to vote were the people that expressed their feeling for something that was put before them, even though it was non-binding. And you could have the same situation here, where you get a low voter turnout, and to me, you're back in the position you're sitting in right now with saying, you know what, we had 135 people at the informational meeting, we had 10 or 12 percent of the public come out for the vote, uh, and hopefully we have races that brings people out to vote. Uh, and then you're saying, well, 12%, is that indicative of the whole community? And as I said before, I still believe at the end of the day, it's your decision to make that choice for us. You have the information that you, that's been given to you. You've sought it out. You've done a magnificent job there. And so I think the onus is on you at this point. And I think what by trying to reach out even more and more and more I think causes you greater consternation and frustration. Procedurally I'm just going to note that we can cast whatever sort of ballot question we want to whether it's a single item whether it's a multiple choice item uh, how that's phrased uh, is a very delicate question but we can uh, uh, put that on the ballot. Ultimately, the decision on bonding to support additional construction needs to be very precisely phrased, it needs to go first to town meeting, and given the timing constraints, if we were to have multiple choice test on the March 1st ballot, it could help to inform uh, some of the town meeting's decision. But if we're going to have a March 12th town meeting about the bond issue, that warning is going to have to go out way before the March 1st ballot is uh, um, decided on. So we'll just have to continue discussing this going forward, I think. Can, can we try to set a date? for us to have some kind of a consensus on, on what we feel we should put forward? Well, I think what's happening is that we've got a series of meetings in January, and um, I think we've I think pretty much we planned that in the third or the fourth week in January, we're going to vote on how to okay. proceed. That is, I don't know the exact date, no, yet, but no, that no, is that's the goal. Fine. I just think this Totally. We have to, we have okay. to decide right. what we're doing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Zach, I'd like to second the idea of the board putting out something that it supports, and either through a letter to the editor, letter in my Brattleboro position paper on the town's website with a uh, voting option or a comments blog uh, comments option. Um, I, I mean, I've been coming to all these meetings, but I didn't know there was consensus about an option. So even if people come, there's too much for people to deal with. Mm -hmm. And I definitely think having four or five options um, is not going to get you the, the answer you want. So I would recommend, um, and if you're not in consensus, that you have your top two favorites and, and make the pros and cons for each one and, and find out what people write back to the report. Thank you. Anybody else yeah. who's in attendance want to speak to this? Ms. Reichman. Uh, hi, Franz Reichsman. Um, I'm actually here sort of as a representative of the 
uh, finance committee of representative town meeting, but my remarks right now don't reflect anything from the finance committee because we haven't really talked about this. Um, but I, I, I would echo the previous two remarks and also what you said, David, um, and, and just amplify that by saying that this is essentially a political process. And um, the, the politics of this, from my way of thinking, are that if the board can reach a consensus on, uh, on your proposal for moving forward, that then sets the stage not so much for finding out what the people of the town think, but for convincing the people of the town that this is the right way to, to go ahead. Um, and I mean, that's what is just the town's person and voter I'd look for. Um, if you do enter into that process of trying to convince people, I think you have a lot of tools at your disposal that you haven't used. Um, you know, postcards and meetings are fine, and you know, the one meeting of the three that I went to I thought was excellent. Um, but a lot of people aren't going to show up for that. And if you go back to the voters in some setting where the budget appears to be in jeopardy, and you tell the people, well, we had lots of meetings that you could have come to, that is going to get you exactly nowhere with the voters. So you've got to engage much more actively in selling your proposition if you can come to a, a joint proposition. And that's what I'd suggest. I mean, nobody has said a thing about social media up to this point. Uh, I'd hesitate to suggest Facebook, because Facebook is for old people like me. But uh, you know, whether it's Instagram or whatever the new thing is, um, there's a lot of ways to reach out into the community. There's also polling. If you want to know what people think, I, I agree with Mr. DeGray that a 10% vote on some referendum doesn't really get you very far. Um, find some way of actually asking people in some meaningful way what they think, and, and, and then you'll have a chance of getting the information. But if you know what you think, you don't even have to ask what people think, because go ahead with, with what you think and, and see if the people will go along with it. I think they probably will. Any further comments from anybody who's in attendance? Anybody on the board? Well, this matter will be back on the agenda just as soon as possible. Um, so the next matter on the agenda tonight is uh, Windham Solid Waste Management District and other solid waste uh, matters. So Peter, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you. Um, we had a really good meeting um, last Thursday at the Solid Waste Management District. Um, I want to thank particularly, particularly Lou and Jan who are here tonight um, for your leadership throughout this process and uh, again last Thursday night. Um, the culmination of the conversation that began here a few weeks ago and has been ongoing since then in several different settings um, was that with really quite limited additional input at this point from uh, Brattleboro's representatives, Patrick was there and I was there, um, Dave Scholes was officially representing the town and the Board of Supervisors and John Allen was there also. So we were well represented but didn't need to say very much because the conversation had become very mature at this point in terms of um, the importance of doing a um, uh, full analysis of what a um, uh, fee-for-service cost allocation kind of system would look like and whether or not that would be a fairer way to collect the revenues of the district. Um, and so without passing judgment on whether or not it would be you know, whether the results of that would be um, a better or fairer system. Um, the various um, community representatives, municipal representatives there, rallied unanimously around the idea that um, it's useful to learn what there is to learn from going through the process of um, developing what that system would look like and then being able to compare that, uh, the results of that effort, to the current system and to um, other choices, perhaps, of um, how the, the uh, district might raise its revenue going forward. And so the motion of the, uh, first the finance committee of the district and then the full board of the district was um, to create a committee of five people um, with a deadline of July 1st to go about the work of um, analyzing and then uh, an analyzing the current um, set of accounts and operations of the district and then um, creating a fee-for-service structure um, through which the district could raise its revenue in the future. 
um, for consideration in the summer by the full board um, and certainly by the uh, individual municipalities who are members of the district. So um, we mostly just said thank you at that point <laughs> rather than giving further advocacy for um, something that I know you as a board feel very strongly about and uh, we as a town have been advocating for now for some time to um, give good full consideration to this concept. The district uh, through its board of supervisors has endorsed that. Um, two of the five members of this committee would be from the town of Brattleboro. Uh, the other three would be other members of the board of supervisors of the district. Uh, and the work product would um, be subject to um, review next summer by the full Board of Supervisors. One point that was made during the discussion was um, just because there's five voting members doesn't mean there wouldn't be an opportunity for fuller participation in the work of the committee because these will be public meetings. So um, anyone who's interested, particularly the other communities uh, who are members of the district who may not end up with a seat uh, as a voting member of it um, would certainly have an opportunity to continue right along uh, from week to week and month to month through the process. So, so um, given that turn of events, um, my recommendation to you this evening is that we um, you know, express our appreciation and support for that uh, movement of the district and that we fully engage in that process uh, and that the um, uh, action, if you choose to take one, of this board related to the proposed FY17 Solid Waste Management District budget um, would be to support it, uh, to support the FY17 budget as proposed, given that um, we are going to work collectively towards um, modifying the revenue structure, or at least the potential that the revenue structure might be modified uh, for FY18. Any other comments from anybody who's on the board or questions from anybody who's on the board? That was a great meeting. It really was. I appreciate everything. So, anybody who's in attendance want to speak to this topic tonight? We thank you very much for working with us to uh, try to examine the fee structure uh, in additional detail so it's responsive to the town's needs. Do you want a motion? Please do. I, I move we accept the uh, proposed <coughs> FY17 Wind Solid Waste Management District Budget. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And we oppose your abstaining. It carries 5 0. So then, Peter, next. The second piece of business under that item would be to appoint Brattleboro's two members, and they specifically asked that um, we have a, a select board member and a staff member. Uh, so um, I think it would be appropriate for Dave Scholes if he's available to serve since he's the um, town's. Uh, representative, uh, primary representative at the Board of Supervisors uh, to be um, the select board member and I'd ask that you appoint Patrick Moreland to be the staff member to uh, serve as the voting member. We do anticipate that in addition to John particularly um, as the um, alternate to the Board of Supervisors but any of the rest of you who may choose to stay more directly involved um, that uh, John O'Connor and I also will be participating um, probably extensively, but certainly um, at least to some degree as this process rolls forward, we'd be um, assisting in the work of the committee and offering um, input into that process. But for the official action, we'd recommend Dave Scholes and uh, Patrick Moreland as our two voting representatives. I nominate, uh, can we do that at this meeting now or do we have to post that? That's, that's No, be because of the fact that you're not um, taking applicants from the community, you can go ahead and make that appointment right now. I nominate Dave Scholes or his designee and Patrick Moreland or his designee to be members of the Wyndham Solid Waste Management District Fee for Service Study Group. Any further nominations? Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? That carries 5 0. Thank you. Next. So the other solid waste item this evening relates to our contract with Triple T. Um, we provided some extensive information to you previously. We've had some discussion around that. We've put the, that material back into the backup um, for this evening. Um, there isn't an action you need to take related to the contract tonight. It would be premature for that because we have, um, uh, if, if you're interested in moving forward um, towards the um, 
uh, possible modification to every other week um, uh, garbage collection. Uh, and um, for now, based on the turn of events over these last few weeks, we wouldn't be looking to um, change the um, method of disposing of our recyclables, but that I believe could be something that could be sort of kept in the wings as part of a contract extension for the future. That's something we need to discuss with Triple T. So there's those details to further refine. Um, and then the, in exchange for the favorable terms that we've previously tentatively arranged uh, under those items, um, Triple T has asked for a five-year extension. Uh, what we'd like to do is have your authority this evening to finalize all the terms of what that would look like for the five-year extension, for the uh, various components of the contract, um, and bring that back to you to address in detail um, as early as possible in January. Um, I would like to reinforce, because there's been some confusion in the public um, related to this matter with some of the feedback we've received, um, one of the concerns that has been expressed to us has been um, a health concern, um, that if the garbage collection is um, reduced to being every other week instead of every week, um, then won't there be lots of material out in the community rotting and attracting uh, you know, rodents or bugs or um, otherwise creating a health hazard? And the reason that we don't believe that will be true and the reason that um, we believe it actually is a viable option for the board to consider is that um, compost material would still be collected every week, as would, be, as, as would the recyclables, recyclables be collected every week. And what makes this possible is the success of the pay-as-you-throw program implementation over the last six months. So already so much material in our waste stream has moved into those other two groups, you know, an increased amount of recycling, a very significantly increased amount of composting in order to um, enable individual households to buy fewer bags and throw away less garbage. Um, what's getting thrown away now is mainly plastic packaging that um, is mostly if not completely clean and uh, doesn't pose the same kind of a health hazard as um, putricibles, which are materials that can rot and smell and create that health hazard. So um, we do think that this can be done. Uh, there are certainly policy questions still to consider in terms of um, you know, the additional change that this would, would represent for our community and how we handle solid waste and what the impacts are for individual households of different types and so on. So there's a fair question there for you to still, um, you know, work your way through in its fullness. But um, we think that it is definitely not a, it would, would not create a health hazard to the community and is a um, viable way through which the town could potentially save almost $100,000 on our annual budget. So. Um, all that said, what I'd ask for this evening is um, that you authorize me to um, get with Triple T and finalize the terms of what this arrangement would look like, what the con contract uh, would specifically say, so that we can bring it back to you for formal uh, consideration. Comments from anybody on the board? He said it all. Comments from anybody who's in attendance? I guess I'm going to say that when you say that there's a policy decision to be made, um, it does represent a service cut to go from picking up trash every week to every other week. And our municipal government is facing huge cost uh, and revenue pressures. And um, based upon everything that we've seen, um, the drop in trash generation that's going to the landfill has been so significant that making that service cut seems like an appropriate way to save some money, at least thus far. Once again, we solicit a comment from anybody who's got anything to say about it, uh, but that's what it's looking like right now. We're ready for motion. You want to make that motion too, Dave? Or uh, we want somebody we else to. have it on the top of my no, tip of right. my tongue. Well, I move that we uh, authorize the town manager to um, uh, engage in negotiations with Triple T and uh, bring us back a proposed contract um, that will provide for trash collection every other week uh, with a corresponding extension of the term of the contract. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And we oppose abstaining. Debt carries 5 0. Thank you. Um, next matter on the agenda 
is the Green Street retaining wall. Hi, Steve. Glad we could keep you late. <coughs> Thanks for coming. Steve Barrett, Director of Public Works. Um, I'm here to um, request that we, uh, the board, consider the uh, the low bid that we received for the Green Street Wall um, replacement. Um, as the board may recall, we did bid this out earlier this summer, and we had uh, bids that were one that was incomplete, and we had a, a several that were quite high in comparison to our budget. So. Um, we received five bids this time, so there, this uh, was successful. Renault Brothers from Vernon, Vermont, uh, was a low bidder for $370,379. Saluzny Excavating from Vernon was $449,500. LaRock and Son from Guilford was $555,000. Mitchell, sand, and grand, uh, gravel from Swansea, New Hampshire was $594,500. Basin Brother Trucking, Westminster was $585,925. What we've, uh, Stevens Engineering has uh, done all the work on the uh, preliminary engineering and they assisted Public Works with the bids. They have reviewed these documents. And um, we're in harmony when we're, we would like to recommend that uh, the low bid from Renault be accepted. And also along with this bid, we did have, we did have an alternate and that's to replace a section of sidewalk from Green Street near the Shriners down to High Street. It's in very poor condition. And we feel this is a good opportunity and we also have the funds available in this contract to complete that task. The, uh, the total amount um, with that addition, and also I might add that there's what we call uh, combined total allowances. Those are, those are two uh, bid items that we put in for unsuitable material, materials that uh, may not be able to re reuse, the gravel, and also for the removal of large rock and stone, which uh, puts additional funds on to uh, about $13,225. So the total that I'm requesting um, to award to Renault is $386,379. And I'll entertain any questions that the board may have. This meets all the specifications that uh, we included in the bids? It does meet the specifications included in the bid. Any questions from anybody on the board? No. Well under the... Any, yeah. Yeah. any questions from anybody who's in attendance? Authority for motion, please. I move to award the bid for the Green Street Retaining Wall project, including alternate two sidewalk replacement to Renaud Brothers of Vernon, Vermont, for a total amount of $386,379. We have a motion to approve the Renaud Brothers contract for the Green Street Retaining Wall. Is there any further discussion from anybody on the board or anybody who's in attendance? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And we propose are abstaining. That carries 4-0, one member having <coughs> left, the, left the meeting. Um, no. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Thank you. Next matter <coughs> on the agenda is the financial report. Great Hi, John. Hi, John. Good evening, everyone. So in your packet is the November financial report. <clears throat> we are 41.7% of the way through the year. And the general fund, after making our normal prorations, uh, would stand at 37.2% of their annual budget. So doing very well with the general fund. <clears throat> Utilities fund uh, was at 44.3. Parking fund was at 33.4. And again, making an adjustment for bond payments in the utilities fund would bring their annual budget percentage down to 39.6%. So. Those two funds also are doing well. <clears throat> Solid waste disposal, we had revenues that were 41.9% 40, of the uh, annual revenues and expenses that were 39.7%. And again, as I've mentioned every month in the past, the November bag revenue and curbside collection costs and tipping fees won't be recorded until this month. So you're really only looking at um, four months worth of revenues and expenditures there. <clears throat> uh, 
The loan report shows that we had uh, outstanding loans of three million nine hundred and seventy thousand five thirty five, and three of the loans had payments that were overdue, and two of the loans were in default and fully reserved. Program income. We had $319,786 in available funds for additional grants and loans. And that's after having reserved the $200,000 for the um, Exit 1 project. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the grant report <clears throat> shows that we had 41 active grants and four grants in the application process. So if you have any specific questions, I'd be glad to try to answer those for you. Otherwise, that's really the report I had for you tonight. Are there any questions from anybody on the board about the financial report? Just a, uh, the sale of bags, uh, is that right on track? Uh, doing, doing very well. It's, they're doing well? Yes. Great. Even after a, a couple months of it's settling down? And it, it's doing well. And I should have had the report today um, from Way Zero, I didn't get it, so I'll probably get that tomorrow, and we can take a look at that next month and yeah. see where we stand after the six months. How is Way Zero been? They've been, been great. Have they? They've been great. That's great. I think we all got a good feeling about Way Zero mm -hmm. in the beginning. So, I like Steve. <laughs> Kate likes Steve. Yeah. So good. That's good to hear. Yeah. Any further discussion on the financial report? Thank you very much, John. Okay. Thank you. Just figure I had to ask something, John. You said there so long. <laughs> Next matter on the agenda is the community development block grant uh, enhancement request for the Wyndham and Windsor Housing Trust VCDP implementation grant. Peter. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, one quick note for the record: um, the select board's aware of this, but the community is probably not. So I'd like to just um, let everybody know that my wife is employed at the Wyndham and Windsor Housing Trust. So um, I don't want there to be any um, confusion or mystery about that. Um, and if it ever presents a conflict for me, I'll be sure to um, declare that uh, in a future matter. It presents no such conflict this evening. We have a very straightforward, simple piece of business to do. Um, you approved a year ago um, the application for a $425,000 grant um, towards a uh, set of improvements to properties that were among the first generation of properties improved here in town uh, by the Wyndham Windsor Housing Trust um, that are now due for um, freshening up and energy efficiency improvements and um, otherwise. So um, you approved that uh, and that application was granted by the state um, early in 2015. Um, the Housing Trust then proceeded with um, steps towards implementing the project and in the um, uh, bidding process received bids that were higher than expected. And so they had a gap of approximately a million dollars for the overall pro project cost, the grant obviously being uh, just a, a portion of the funding towards a much larger project, overall budget of five and a half million dollars initially. Um, so they needed about another million dollars. They've come up with a number of different sources to um, uh, cover that um, and and be able to proceed with the project. Um, there's a $45,000 component of um, covering the $1.1 million higher bids um, that would be a um, additional funding through this same grant that um, the town applied for and uh, that the state granted. Uh, we've had communication with the officials at the state to make sure that um, this would be acceptable as an um, addition to the prior approval, and they've indicated that this is actually a pretty routine matter for them. Um, when they support a project and make a grant like this, um, you know, there's often situations that turn out a little differently than they have been predicted, and when that happens, so long as the numbers are um, reasonable in magnitude, they routinely uh, approve these um, supplemental funds. So in this instance, what the state said to us is if you approve this evening making the request for the additional $45,000, they will approve it and it will fully fund the project. We would recommend your approval. Is there any inquiry from anybody on the board? Any inquiry or comments from anybody who's in attendance? <clears throat> I think we're ready for a motion then. I'm ready. Um, 
I move that we authorize a $45,000 enhancement application request to the Vermont Community Development Program to support the Wyndham and Windsor Housing Trust Portfolio Enhancement 3 project. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And we oppose abstaining. That carries 4 0. Next matter on the agenda is the work plan and budget and town meeting article presentation relating to the downtown Brattleboro Alliance. Yep. You gentlemen want to take the table? Can I say something while they're work walking up? Yes, please. I, in my job as Chamber of Commerce, I'm an ex officio <laughs> member on the Downtown Alliance Board. I'm a non-voting member, but so I'm not going to vote on this tonight. I just feel like, <coughs> even though I don't vote on the board, I don't think it's well, I, kind of, I kind of feel like you're there <laughs> representing us. Yeah. Well, it's in the chamber by, it's okay. in the Downtown Alliance chamber. bylaws, and okay. I'm there for the chamber, Very for good. my job, so. <laughs> okay. Um, gentlemen, if you would please introduce yourselves. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ted Kramer from uh, Downtown Brattleboro Alliance. Uh, Dick DeGray, Downtown Brattleboro Alliance. And Greg Warden, Downtown Brattleboro Alliance. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully this won't be as heavy as the earlier discussions here this evening. <laughs> so. Well, I think what we'll do is we'll ask you to make your presentation. Okay. The materials that we've got, raise a couple of questions. You know, we may have some questions for you, but please okay. tell us what it is that you have to present. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I am standing in for our president, Michelle Simpson Siegel, who had a um, school concert that one of her children was participating in, so she regrets that she was unable to come and visit with you tonight, but hopefully you got her um, email package of documents that includes our work plan and our budget. A um, little bit of discussion on how we have gotten to the point where we're here this evening. <clears throat> it's very important to us at the Downtown Brattleboro Alliance to try to be representative of our downtown community. And so um, as a board, we have tried to recruit a board that is a very um, excellent cross-section of our downtown community. So we have a nine-member board of directors that includes representatives from the merchant store community. We have um, representatives on our boards from the education community. We have representatives on our board of directors from the arts community and from the professional community. So at first blush, we want to make sure as a board that we have our eyes and ears in a number of different uh, cross currents in our downtown. So that's, that's the first thing that we would like you to be mindful of as you consider our budget and our work plan. Um, I will mention also, uh, besides our nine board of director members, we do have the benefit of input from Kate and from Rod Francis, and they have been um, extremely helpful to us in keeping us on task making sure that we're complying, compliant with the state um, ordinance and our own bylaws. And um, their, their advice has been uh, extremely useful and helpful and we're, we're grateful to Kate and to Rod. So one of the things we did this year is we wanted to make sure in the presentation and preparation of our budget and work plan that we did really reach out to the community in our downtown improvement district. So the first thing we did was we had a burgers and beer event at Duo's restaurant where we sent out postcards to various members of our community. That was a um, um, discussion feedback session that was very well attended at Duo's in September. And during the course of that get together, uh, Michelle Simpson Siegel as our president presented a PowerPoint presentation that is somewhat similar to some of the factual background you were provided tonight and we solicited survey and feedback from our members on their various wish lists as to what they would like to see the downtown improvement group um, focus on. So that took place in mid-September. The board itself, the board of directors, reviewed that information during the course of October, and one of the uh, most significant aspects of feedback that we got from the members and our surveys was basically 
keep doing what you're doing in the context of beautification of downtown. Please keep doing what you're doing in regard to our flower program. Please keep doing what you're doing in regard to holiday lights. And whatever you can do to make the physical appearance of downtown Brattleboro as attractive as possible, please continue to do that. That was one significant bit of input that we received. Another one was, uh, in this day and age, focus on the internet, focus on the web, focus on social media. So if any of you have had the opportunity, um, we have what I believe is an excellent uh, web page in town that also represents the various communities that participate so importantly in our downtown. So there's a list of current events on that web page. There's a discussion about various stores. There's um, discussions in there about the various restaurants and pubs that we have downtown on our web page. We also have our Facebook page that um, I think you've been provided perhaps with some of the statistics on that. That has disclosed and presented hundreds of different events to the community during the course of the year. And we have reached out, and I believe we've um, uh, reached out to approximately six to 9,000 people on Facebook alone. And then just recently, in the last month or two, we have developed a newsletter that we send to all of our members that's written by our coordinator, Jen Austin. Jen is not here tonight, but she has been um, a fantastic resource for us. And in that uh, downtown newsletter, uh, that's another opportunity for us to reach out to the community and keep the community informed on what we're doing. Presently, we have a holiday um, raffle program where you can go into stores and sign up for a opportunity to win approximately $500 in gift certificates for various stores and restaurants downtown. And that program that we developed was basically a matching program where we as a group went into stores and restaurants downtown and purchased gift certificates um, that the property owners matched. And I think now the total value of the um, various gifts are $700, so it provides us with more than one opportunity to have uh, a winner in our community. We had a promotion that we also did during Halloween, and right now we're brainstorming with the local merchants on a um, We Love Brattleboro Valentine's event in February. Uh, February, as you may recall, is a important month in Brattleboro because we have the Harris Hill Ski Jump, we have Valentine's Day, and we have something else that I've forgotten, but Winter Carnival. Brattleboro Winter Carnival. So that's a, that's a high octane, active month. And we're just in the early stages of developing a We Love Brattleboro program that's going to basically be centered around Valentine's Day. Um, so once we got that feedback, we've developed our work plan. And then the work plan was presented to the members of the downtown district at a meeting that we had at the River Garden in November. And I know from the early days of BABB, whenever we have those annual meeting budget and work plan reviews, we're always uh, concerned about getting a, uh, a quorum out. And as you know from trying to solicit public feedback, sometimes you get good turnout, sometimes you get moderate turnout. So what we did as a board was we sent out a mailing approximately two weeks before our annual meeting. The board of directors members themselves got on the phone list and tried to get the voters out. And um, during the course of that meeting, which took place in November, I think we had approximately two dozen of our members turn out. During the course of that meeting in November, uh, Michelle also presented another uh, PowerPoint presentation to the group outlining our work plan for next year and also the fact that we have a surplus of funds in this year's budget that we would like to devote to the purchase of um, a tractor, rack cards, and illuminating uh, and a light program down at the Whetstone Brook. And I think uh, Michelle has also provided you with a separate email letter explaining uh, that situation to you. During the course of our annual meeting in uh, November, the proposed work plan and budget for next year, as well as the modifications to this year's work plan and budget, were unanimously approved. So that brings us to where we are today, presenting our budget for your consideration and prior to consideration by Representative Town Meeting.
I think that sort of covers my introductory comments on what we're presenting, and, and Dick may have some comments. Maybe great. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go for it. Uh, one of the things with being the chair of the uh, design committee, I just wanted to touch up on a couple of things that uh, uh, Mr. Kramer, who was actually voted in as vice president at our board meeting uh, yesterday, and uh, Greg was voted in as the secretary. Uh, Ted was talking about the participants with the holiday giveaway. And we have 19 stores that are participating, which is a significant number. Uh, the other event uh, promotion that we had was the Halloween promotion, which was new. And it was just an opportunity for kids to go trick-or-treating uh, before the Horribles Parade downtown or right after the parade. And I must say that I was somewhat skeptical about uh, uh, how the event would turn out. And I was pleasantly surprised that the merchants participating had a very high number of uh, kids trick-or-treating downtown. And I know that our organization was pleased with that, and they'll be building upon that. Uh, as for the design program and our tree lighting uh, uh, on Friday, uh, November 28th, uh, we had 125 people attend, and uh, James was our guest tree lighter this year. <laughs> James has been a, uh, seems to be around uh, just at the right time when I certainly need a hand, uh, whether it's putting up lights or pulling up some flowers, and I certainly appreciate his help. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, thank Elysian Tree uh, nursery for again this year as they have uh, every year since there has been a tree downtown for donating the tree and Renau uh, and Turner for uh, their service in picking up the tree up in Dummerston and delivering it and putting it in and no charge to the organization. Uh, we have also, if you notice downtown in the light program, uh, we have s several stars that are on the uh, uh, sides of two of the buildings downtown. And that is another program that was uh, really a co-op program between the organization and the building owner where uh, the building owners paid a portion to have the lights up on their building and DBA paid a portion. And also there are several plantings that are in front of the storefronts outside of the buckets that we maintain. That was another partnership between the storefronts and DBA. So uh, the feedback on the way that downtown looks, has, as it has looked all year, has been extremely positive. Uh, I would just like to say our, our web page is brattleboro.com. There is a wonderful calendar on our web page, and we're encouraging people, if they have an event, to get it to us, uh, and we'll get it posted. It is a really a magnificent calendar, and you should actually go to our webpage, and it has all of our businesses on there and activities in the community. And a year ago at this time, we didn't have a webpage. Uh, and so uh, our new coordinator, Jen Austin, has done a magnificent job in providing that and we believe that building on that is going to be a significant tool for DBA and the businesses in the district. So uh, having said that, uh, the last person I want to thank is uh, Ahmed Rashid. Uh, certainly my condolences go to him and his family, but he is a significant player in our flower program. Uh, he is a local uh, florist up on uh, Route 9, and that's where we purchase our flowers. And he is a significant help to us, and I'm not sure we could do the flower program without him. So I really want to send a big thank you out to him, and also my wife, who is uh, uh, certainly uh, my partner in 99% um, of the endeavors that I, I do downtown. And she is a true uh, workhorse for DBA. She's not a she is a member because she's a building owner, but does yeoman's work uh, 
uh, downtown in terms of beautification and cleanliness. Uh, I, I really appreciate the effort that she makes. So having said that, I guess we're ready for any questions that you might have. Did you want to say anything, Greg? Just thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, just, I <clears throat> think that uh, it probably needs to be said that you know Dick has been really instrumental in doing a wonderful job, he and Missy, with the uh, flowers downtown, and this year with the lighting especially, um, and that's really appreciated. Without that type of leadership, without that type of hands-on work, it's volunteer work, a lot of things don't get done. And you know that you're looking for volunteers always. We're looking for volunteers as well. So um, if anybody is in the mind frame of helping beautify downtown or helping with DBA, please have, please come see us. <coughs> I guess that's the way to do it. I have a couple of questions just based upon the materials that we've received and the budget request. Um, so we got this new email from uh, Ms. Simpson Siegel today indicating that there was a $25,000 surplus that apparently carried over into this fiscal year and that um, there were some plans for how it was going to be spent. Um, going through the materials that we received, um, that wasn't anything that I knew until I got this email. And so um, I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about the source of that $25,000 surplus. Where did it come from? Uh, th that's, thank you for that question. Uh, as you know, Mr. Chairman, uh, BAB, uh, and I guess I'll use the BAB uh, name because we didn't actually change our name to Brattleboro Downtown Alliance until I think September, ago. Uh, September or October it officially got changed with the state. And for several years, BABB was going through some transition uh, with the River Garden uh, and its staffing position. And uh, I was certainly on the board when some of that transition started and the, the River, Garden, River Garden got sold and its director left. Uh, the organization had struggled finding a coordinator or slash director, but I think that the, the language had changed to make it a coordinator position. I believe that's when Kate was on the board. And we went, we had, in this year and a half period, we've probably gone without a coordinator probably a year out of that year and a half period. So you're looking at a significant savings uh, over, and it carries over into two years. So it's not like January 1 to December 30th. And so this is actually the first year starting July 1 that we're in a position where everything, when we were here last year with Matt Livingston, and obviously there's been a transition just in the 11 months since we were here before you with our, our last budget. You know, uh, Matt had to step down for personal reasons and Michelle has, you know, stepped up as, you know, almost like next person in line. And so we have, for that year and a half period, there were some line items that didn't get expended. And so that's where you come up with roughly this $25,000. And certainly, you know, one of the things with the money, it all gets intermingled. So when we get a check, it's not like separate accounts. And so one of the things that I, I certainly am mindful of is making sure that I was comfortable with that number, uh, that if we were going to go out and spend it, uh, that we wouldn't end up in a deficit. And uh, I do feel comfortable. And some of that money was from uh, facade. You know, we have carryover in terms of facade money that we have in our budget that people don't utilize. 
and there was some money a couple of years ago when the river garden got sold. I think it was like $1,800 that got put into our budget and the board, which I was not a member of, decided to put that in the facade program. Well, not all that money got utilized uh, at that point, and so that carried over. And one of the things that when we did finally hire a coordinator uh, is that I had her talk with all the people who had been previously approved and said, you're either going to do your project or you're going to lose that opportunity to use that money, and then you're going to have to reapply. Uh, so from that standpoint of having that surplus money, uh, I feel fortunate in one regard that there are some things that uh, uh, were wrecked, the, the $8,000 for the lights and the Whetstone Pathway. We, we talked about that last year. Uh, uh, Peter, you weren't here, but when we talked about this last year, that was a, a recommendation from that VDAT report that the state spent significant dollars on uh, in terms of something that might enhance our downtown. Uh, and I believe that it would. Uh, you know, one of the things about, uh, I do believe, Plenty Park, which was initiated uh, through BAP, and I think that's one of the cornerstones of the organization, has really made a tremendous difference downtown. So that's pretty much the, the money aspect of it, was as mostly to do with not having a coordinator, uh, and certainly that influx or outflux, however you want to put that, of, uh, you know, uh, not having someone in that capacity. So obviously, just like you, when you didn't have a full-time town manager, there were significant savings to you. So uh, in, in some regards, I look at it as a uh, as kind of a blessing in disguise because we're able to do some things without in, uh, with as we level fund our budget again, as it has been level funded for the past several years. So then I have a follow-up question. Sure. Um, the budget, profit and loss budget to actual, shows uh, 85,000 anticipated uh, expenses and revenues. Right. But only seventy-eight thousand and change in revenue, and only sixty-seven thousand dollars in expenses, and, and a ten thousand dollars surplus. Right. So and wait, 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 wait. Okay. So is that ten thousand dollars shown as a surplus in the profit and loss? Additional money on top of the twenty-five thousand dollars that's shown or referred to in this email. No, uh, and one of the things that, again, uh, the budget that was approved last year, last year, one of the things that the, the board made clear that in prior years they had fundraising as part of their revenue stream, and that's why you see that $85,000 figure. Well, the organization had been deficient uh, for several years in terms of, of outside revenue. Uh, and actually, I think there's probably, I think there's $300 in outside revenue. Uh, yeah, uh, 325, where am I? I want to make sure I get that right before I comment on it. But the outside revenue was significantly lower by you know, $9,000, or, or, I mean, not $9,000, about $7,000, because it's, uh, there was $7,500 that was going to supposedly be fundraised. Well, the organization has never been able to really fundraise, and so the, when we came before you last year, we made sure that we didn't put fundraising in there because we are so abysmal at it, at least we were. And so from the standpoint, when you get down to the bottom of the profit and loss budget to actual, uh, you can see the net ordinary income is $10,000. And uh, so if we had raised that uh, $7,500, then obviously the number 
that number on the bottom would have been uh, eighteen thousand or nineteen thousand dollars instead of ten five. Well, I understand that, but I mean, my my inquiry is. Um, See, it, it looks to me when I look at this budget that if there's $10,000 carried over from last year's budget to this year, that the proper way to proceed with an organization like this would be for us to raise 68000 rather than $78,000 in taxes. <clears throat> and so what I'm trying to figure out is how much money is really built up and where did it come from? We we discussed that with our members uh, in terms of because uh, I, I'm no different than you. I said, well, we have a surplus. We can say, well, let's go after six. Let's get $68,000 and reduce the burden. We went to our membership and we told them that we wanted to use this surplus here. Now, there have been times I, I can tell you as being a, a select board member and a town meeting member, where surplus revenue is gone to reduce the taxes and the following year you end up making it up. So we were clear with the membership about the expenditure. We were clear to the membership and the membership had the option of making an amendment and saying to us, no, we don't want to do what you're recommending. We would rather use that for a reduction in what we have to pay in the DID. So I don't. I, I'm. I, I think that uh, Michelle and the rest of the board was very forthwith with its membership, and you know certainly I talked about that. I, I made that clear to them that that was an option, and I and I certainly appreciated them giving us the authority to use this uh, this money for the three items that you see before us, which I believe will benefit the organization. I guess that I, I remain a little bit confused as to how much money is there and how it got there. And I'd really like to understand that before I'm going to be ready to vote for the budget. I don't know what others think. But. Well, no, I, I'm still, I, I, I can see the $10,000 and, and, and I understand that. Um, I, I'm still at a loss of the $25,000. You know, I, I mean, I, I understand how you got to that. Um, I'm just wondering if there was a carryover from last year. Why didn't we? Was there any carryover from last year, and why didn't we hear about it last year? Um, I'm not sure. I had just taken over the treasurer's right. position late in the year, just before I came here. So, uh, you know, uh, that's the amount of money that we have. I, I, I guess I'm somewhat befuddled as to there's there's no sleight of hand here. Uh, in terms of we've been forthwith with you, we've been forthwith with the membership, and the membership, uh, certainly there are people uh, who are certainly vocal and uh, uh, concerned about tax rates, and uh, they were certainly at the meeting, and uh, the vote was unanimous. There wasn't any there wasn't any uh, descending votes. And so I guess uh, I'm not sure that if you don't approve this, that bringing this back to the body, uh, what it's going to do. Uh, you know, when, when you come here with the body support, uh, I, I guess I would say, well, you know, if, the, if we didn't, then you I, you would be right. Kick this back. You never told the, the, the members about what's going on here. And so we let the members know about this, and we let the members know what the expenditures were going to be, and we believe it will benefit the district. Yeah. Just as a clarification for the people who are watching, uh, the tax money that we're talking about is comes from the downtown improvement district alone, so that the building members or building owner of the downtown area that's in the district are the ones that pay the additional tax. It's not 
the general population that pays right. the, the tax. So, um, and as Dick said, the membership uh, had an opportunity to say, hey, we don't want to spend this money this way. Uh, and as he also said, it was a unanimous vote to approve this, this uh, $25,000 of expenditure from quote unquote a surplus, which was funds <clears throat> that had been allocated before, but hadn't been spent. But this allows us actually to do things that we wouldn't be able to do otherwise, and that's actually going to benefit the downtown. So, yeah. I, I certainly don't want to, you know, what people have done downtown and, and the flowers, and it, it, it's fantastic. I, I, I love it. But I've always, I've always been on the fence about BABB. I just, I, I don't get it. I don't, um, uh, and, and Dick, I can, you know, certainly remember because I was on the board with you, <laughs> and, uh, you know, when uh, you were at odds um, with the organization. So again, I'm, I'm just, I've always been confused about BABB and, uh, and, and it's, but again, I, I don't want to slight what, what has been done downtown, but uh, I, I just always wonder what, you know. What so may I respond to that comment? Uh, I have to tell you that uh, for years and years and years, I thought the organization, I felt personally that they didn't do anything. I felt that as a taxpayer in the district that I wasn't getting anything for my money. Now, maybe I'm doing the work, but it's because the organization has the funds to do the work. I do the work because I enjoy it. My wife does it because we enjoy it. The feedback that we get uh, has been positive. Uh, and as a taxpayer in the district, I am extremely pleased at what is going on. Even if I'm doing the work, I don't mind doing the work. At some point, I won't be, and maybe the flower program goes away or they contract it out. But at this point, I can tell you as a taxpayer in the district, I have seen more things happening in a positive manner with the new board that we have, all new blood. There is nobody with a history other than Greg certainly was around when it started. Uh, I certainly wasn't on the board. I sat over there and held them accountable. But at some point, I believe you have to look at what's happening now. You have to drop the baggage of the River Garden and all that. That's gone. That, that baggage weighed the organization down. And because there was this long transitional period, there's this money here. And so, thank you. I'm glad we're not in debt. And I'm glad we don't have the River Garden so we can do the things that not only the downtown building owners and merchants, but the town as a whole appreciates. The town is getting credit for the flowers by people because they think that you're doing the flowers and paying for the flowers. They think that the town does the holiday lights until you say, no, the town isn't contributing at all to this. This is all the building owners in the DID. If there is such consternation between the board and the organization, I think the board should revisit whether the DID is important to the municipality or they look at another organization. Because I believe that the work that Michelle, who stepped up to the plate, who really didn't want to be our president after Matt had to leave, and the board members that we have were small. It's difficult to get members. I appreciate the work that they're doing. There's promotions going on. Stephanie uh, is doing a magnificent job and trying to get activity, trying to get word out, getting people to come to our community. And obviously something must be working because when you look at your rooms and meals tax number, your number is significantly higher. So something is going on in our community that's bringing people here. And I'd like to think that 
Our work is a small part of that. Whether it's the beautification, whether it's the lights, or whether it's a promotion, I'd like to think that DBA is a part of that. Not all of it, but I believe that we are a part of it. Because the feedback that I'm getting from what we're doing is extraordinarily positive. No one, everybody likes it. And if you're not happy with it, then maybe the board needs to revisit and go in another direction. No, no, Dick, what worries me a little bit is that you're volunteering, uh, you and Missy, uh, you know, and once you say, I'm done, you know, like you said, is the flower, is the lights, is that all going to go away? No, and, and what's going to happen, John, is when you look at the $78,000, that's been that number for eight or nine years, mm -hmm. uh, or, or at least five okay, years. Yeah. Five years, it's been $78,000. So the board is aware that if I stop doing the work that I'm doing, that number is going up from $14,000 to about $35,000 a year because they priced it up to say, okay, what's it gonna cost us to continue the flower program? And so the reality is this $78,000, if it's going to you know, if the flower program is going to continue, and that's up to who's ever there. And if the, if the DID goes away, then it's up to the municipality to say, this is a good investment or not. That's, your, that's who's ever serving here. So, you know, that's all I can say to you is that we would appreciate your support and moving forward. We've been very honest and forth with, with our membership, and that's all I can say. not expressing any sort of displeasure with the organization. Uh, I received in my select board materials a profit and loss statement said that there was a $10,000 surplus. And then I got an email today at 420 saying that there was $25,000 in the bank that wanted to be spent that way. And I think it's just a responsible thing for the select board to say, please show us where that money came from before we vote to just expend it with less than two hours public notice of that. This email from Michelle came at 420 today That's saying right. we have $25,000. And, and certainly uh, we tried to get something to you last week to go in your packet. And you know what? Everybody has a job and I just can't, you know, you just can't get people. I couldn't get a hold of the president to do something. She was out of town. And so that's who it should have come from. So uh, at the end of the day, you know, we're a volunteer organization. Uh, right, wrong, or indifferent, uh, that's what the numbers are. It's, it's not like it's hocus pocus, uh, you know. Uh, and if we, we didn't have a surplus, uh, this conversation would be moot and we would have been out of here and I would have been watching the presidential debate uh, that I've already missed uh, quite a bit of. So. Uh, I'd like to ask the town manager to, to work with the organization to just give us some information, like a balance sheet, to understand that surplus and then, you know, represent this. It only seems to make sense before we vote on it. Okay. Right. I'm happy. I mean, it looks like it's good work that's going on there. I just need to understand what's going on Okay. before we can, uh, well, that's before I can vote on it. I agree, and I just want to say too, it's it's not at all personal. I think the work that you all are doing makes a huge difference. I'm not sitting here knowing the history that has been referred to. I don't go back on the select board far enough to know all of the history, but I hear that there's earnest work happening, and it's sincere, and it makes a difference, and I feel like you are also wanting to be very forthcoming and transparent. I don't think that's in question at all. It's purely, like everything else that we vote on, it has to feel clear and we have to understand, you know, enough to really vote with confidence on, on the information in front of us. So I'm hoping that that, that lands as our truth. It is not meant in any way, shape, or form to disrespect the work that's happening. I mean, this delay doesn't affect, it doesn't affect your, you know, we, we just have to have this. We need to approve this right, by, uh, with the 
warning for the town meeting by the last week in January. Yep. Yeah, so maybe we can put it back on the agenda for January 5th okay. and get the rest of that information and then be ready to vote on the, on yeah. the proposal. Okay. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. The next matter on tonight's agenda is consideration of the local hazard mitigation plan entitled the 2015 All Hazard Mitigation Plan, Town of Bradford, Wyndham County, Vermont. Hi, Rod. Hi, David. Welcome back. Thank you. It's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So, what you have before you is a brief memo, and you should have received and read by now yes. uh, the town of Brattleboro has a mitigation plan. Um, the um, memo outlines what are the benefits of maintaining a hazard mitigation plan both from a town policy standpoint with regard to prioritizing um, p potential ways of remedying existing and known hazards and also making available to us uh, certain funds and support through the state. Prior to this so-called standalone, or in the FEMA terminology, single jurisdiction has a mitigation plan, we were a part of a multi-jurisdiction has a mitigation plan that was maintained by the Windham Regional Commission. So the only thing that's really, um, I'm happy to take questions on what actually is involved in the plan and any of the substantive questions that it may raise, or we can move on to the question of the very specific resolution language. Didn't we see this before? Like yeah. have before? <laughs> it all looked very familiar. I, think I read it all like word for word before. <laughs> um, yeah, it comes back to you in little snippets in your dreams. Um, it, no, it's it's not one of the things. No, that really? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, There's other just, things. So that's just a that's a personal thing. Okay, I didn't realize. I thought everyone had that experience. Okay, so um, yeah, we actually in this process uh, utilize the planning commission as the policy making body to pull the plan together. And so when our office uh, distributed drafts. We finally had a draft version for you to review prior to it going off to right. FEMA for their lengthy approval process. Um, I move to adopt the local hazard <laughs> mitigation plan entitled 2015 All Hazard Mitigation Plan Town of Brattleboro, Wyndham County, Vermont. Uh, um, there's no discussion. Is there any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed to abstaining? That carries 4-0. <laughs> Thanks, Rod. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry I think to I'm, keep you so late. No, no, it's like, I think I'm on for the next item as well, well actually. I do. Next matter on the agenda <laughs> is um, the Design Review Committee. Right. Do I recall that we have a special downtown district that uh, has design review standards now with our new zoning ordinance? It's a bit broader than that. Okay, so in the prior iteration of the um, zoning ordinance, um, in some very early work, but excellent work um, dating back 10 or 15 years, we had design guidelines for downtown. And the, the emphasis there is on the guidelines, which means that they were simply guidance that wasn't a requirement. As part of the um, new land use regulations, we have established a historic resource overlay district and that provides for design review. So it's um, the four national register historic districts in Brattleboro. So that's downtown, West Brattleboro uh, Green, the Clark Canal neighborhood, and the Horton Homestead neighborhood. So um, the purpose of the design review committee is to, it's ad hoc or it only, it only convenes when there's an application that's relevant comes together and considers the application from a architectural and design standpoint, including the landscape, makes a recommendation to the DRB, and the DRB can then process the application. So it's a way of formalizing that design review function for those uh, neighborhoods that I just listed off. 
it's going to be a three member yes. of the public with planning department staff staffing as well we'll yes we will staff it um, it is uh, to be made up of, of members from of the public there is a set of qualification criteria that we would like to have advertised that's on the second page of that memo in particular another interesting document to relay that night, the Secretary of the Interior's Standards for Rehabilitation. So this is a document that is um, popular um, and is an important... Just, just some people. <laughs> yeah, really. And it's an important document for being able to guide recommendations on historic districts. So we would really uh, seek out people with some background or experience with that document. Oh, come in. <laughs> Anybody have any questions or comments? Anybody who's in attendance have questions or comments? Somebody want to make a motion? Sure. To approve establishment of a design review committee of three members with three-year terms and staggered termination dates with appointment of said three members to occur on January 19, 2016. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed abstaining? That carries 4 -0. Is there any other business to come in front of the select board meeting tonight? Ready for a motion to adjourn? So moved. We have a motion to adjourn. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Everybody opposed for abstaining. That carries 4 0. Thank you, people who have been watching us on BCTV. Thank you, uh, BCTV technicians. Thank you, ASL interpreters. Thank you, members of the press and uh, everybody who participated tonight.